This is a paranormal podcast for those of you that are brave enough to join the circle. Uh, welcome, and I know we have some new subscribers, so thank you guys for subscribing. I've been watching numbers going up all week on our new YouTube channel. I appreciate you so much because TikTok's going great, honestly. I'm going to actually bring in my sidekick co-host, Kat Cormier. How are you, Kat? How's it going? Oh man, you know, I love, <laughs> see it's so, like there's such a stark difference and I always say this because Elfie is like, she's so intelligent and she's like the smart brains of all of us. And like I just could, we could both just listen to her. We just, we do that on the phone. Like she's, she'll it's go like, off on a tangent and we're like little kids like watching this like <laughs> ancient elder. She's probably no, an Arcutarian because she's so freaking smart, Starcy. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but um when it's Kat and I, man, we have, like, hilarious, ridiculous streams. And uh, tonight is definitely, you know, a hilarious, crazy stream that I'm really looking forward to. My dogs are barking. I'm sorry. They're, it's so windy in Vegas. They should stop in a second. It's been crazy windy here. How's um, the weather up in, you know, northeastern Canada? I'm just kidding. You're not in Canada. That's literally what it feels like. It's fine. Um, it's on and off cold. It, like, hailed last week. Hmm. And then we had, like, a nor'easter four days ago. And now it's just, like, really rainy and sunny. And I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> like, like, I feel like April and May for New England are just, like, a cluster of question marks. Like, nobody knows what's going to happen until June. And then it's going to be smooth sailing and sunny. So. Also, though, the worst part of that is, like, for me, because, I mean, sometimes we get that in Vegas where it'll be, like, really hot. And then all of a sudden it's, like, raining. But I get sick yeah. and allergies when it ha Do you get, like, when it gets, when it stark oh. changes, you get sick from it? I do because of the humidity here. So, like, it's just sticks to the lungs it sticks to everything <laughs> sticks to the lungs so oh, that's so confident you're like yeah yeah let's just do this you know I'm gonna own it hashtag asthmatic here oh my so. gosh it's so funny <laughs> um so we are live on youtube we're live on twitch and we're live on facebook live and we've also added a new stream site called trovo so i just want to make sure i plug that so trovo is an up-and-coming um essentially it's a platform that is uh they're challenging Twitch is the easiest way to say it. And, you know, I'm the kind that I love social media platforms. Like you can, you know, I don't think there's ever enough. I love social media. Um, so if you go to Trovo, T-R-O-V-O, and look up Ghost Girl Diaries, we are also on there. Or you can go to ghostgirldiaries.com and look for the live section. And we are on there if you want to follow us on Trovo. It will be interesting to see what happens over time with Trovo since they're the first official platform to sort of challenge Twitch. So I don't know what's going to happen. We'll see. Um, we are streaming. I know people keep asking this, so I just want to repeat it. Um, we are technically streaming currently on the old YouTube channel. Um, and that's because we still are not to 1,000 subscribers. And honestly, it's because I haven't uploaded enough content on the new channel yet. Trust me, it's coming. We, Kat and I have had some great ideas and there's lots of stuff that's being implemented very soon. Um, and then once we get to the new subscriber count, we will be fully subscribed and live on the other channel 100%. But for now, we're uploading these later as a later stream on that channel. And of course, as the podcast, we um, passed another uh, podcast, um, like, congratulatory number today. I got an email. We've hit... Milestone? Yeah, we've hit 45,000 downloads on the podcast. Congratulations. What? Oh yeah. my gosh. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. amazing. Yeah, amazing. Amazing, amazing. So really good. So happy about that. So thank you everybody that has stuck with me through. Uh, there was an amazing thread the other day. We have a fan Facebook group 
and it's a private Facebook group. And I created this last like fall. I just wanted a place for like Ghost Girl Diaries fans to like find each other. You know what I mean? Like, cause I mean, Ghost Adventures does it and all these other groups. And I was like, we need one. And they, they shared a thread in there the other day talking about where they started following me in my journey. And of course there were Aww. some new ones. There were some people that, that were like, I know Cat, not Crystal. And I was like, I love it. And then there were some people that were like, I literally saw her on Travel Channel in 2011. And I was like, oh my, oh my God, that was terrible. But thank you, like, jeez. Stop it. I know. No, it's so good. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. it is, it's exciting. So, um, you know, let's do like, you know, our normal kind of chat first and then we'll go dig into our, this topic is big. <laughs> I don't even know what we're gonna do here. I have like eight tabs open. So like, yeah. I'm just like ready. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Um, yeah. First of all, um, we're gonna we're gonna touch on this topic lightly. Um, okay. <clears throat> well, let's start. Let's back up even a little bit further. Last week, I I was talking with Elfie, and you know it's a huge congratulations to Zach Bagans because he has now been uh, you know crowned king of the paranormal like officially, and it's what I told Elfie like no one can get bigger. And, um, you know, like Elfie even said, the next big thing he can do is literally make his own network, like Oprah Winfrey ne Network. So I just wanted to get your opinion on that. He's, he's now EPing other shows. Like he has, I mean, he's, he's made it so far to the top. Like, I just wanted to see what you said about it since Elfie put her two cents in. Yeah, I think it's great. I think it's great. I think after, um, you know, the series that he did with Eli, I think it was a matter of time before something like this to happen. I'm kind of shocked it hasn't happened sooner, to be honest. Um, but I'm curious to see what, what comes next mm -hmm. and what other shows will be produced. Ghost Girl Diaries. Um, you know, it'd be great. <laughs> well, he knows. I mean, he this isn't like, this isn't a secret. You know what I mean? Like, he no. knows. But, no. um, you know, a lot of people, you know, we talk about this all the time. Like, we'll see, we'll, you know, on our Ghost Girl Diaries page, Kat helps me manage so the social media side of things. And we see people making fun of Zach all the time. And it's just the irony because, you know, yeah, I get it. People, like, think it's funny that he's always doing demons and stuff. But I don't think they realize what it takes to be a producer and, an ex and a successful executive producer. And I just yeah. wanted to run that by you because you understand now the side of, of film. Like, people don't realize, like, you think that you're just, and this isn't just him. This is anyone that has been signed to a failed show or a successful show. How much effort does it go into creating a series? Like, you know this firsthand. It's a lot. It's, it's, made, to, it's made to look easy in front of the camera. Um, there's a lot more complexities happening behind the scenes and um you know for something that's successful to happen everything has to be in order you know um and it doesn't go without the help of the people helping out behind the scenes too you oh know? it's a huge crew it's a huge crew and mm -hmm. especially for him to be going on 30 seasons um and more and more yeah i mean no yeah. one no one's gonna compete with that i mean even once ghost girl diaries gets signed because it will it will get signed um, I do not want to go for 20 seasons. There's no way. No, I don't. I don't. No. I want to go on to produce other series. I even would like to produce um, feature films. I would even like to produce other documentaries. Um, I may even want to later down the line get into acting later, but this is like my first priority. Um, but yeah, like, I guess what it's so funny though, because the paranormal community makes fun of him, and I do want to back him up because you don't realize, like, people for some reason think that you're pr producing a show and he's just turning on a camera and going. And there's so many layers to that. It's pre-production, production, post-production, post -production, which was the point of my original YouTube channel was to teach you guys about film. Because my the problem I always saw in this industry was, yes, there are there's a plethora of paranormal investigators out there, but 99.9% .9 of them do not understand the film side of it. So if you're wanting to merge the two, you need to learn the film side. And unfortunately, that's where you do see a lot of these series who have failed after the first season because it was shit. 
And it wasn't necessarily their investigating or, or the evidence that they captured, but it was their, their film knowledge and how you're able to create a story within film and present it to an audience for it to be successful. So anyway, I just think it's amazing that Zach's, it's crazy. I, I, you're right, I agree. I think that he should have been doing this a long time ago. Um, I yeah. think he's now an official executive with Discovery, which is the umbrella of all of them. So not just travel, but at Discovery. And um, I'm really happy for him. It's huge. It's yeah. huge. And signed hey, Ghost Girl Diaries. Um, yeah, exactly. And signed Ghost Girl Diaries. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, and the reason why I'm merging into this conversation is we got a phone call this week. Mm, yes. Mm hmm. We got a phone call, and it was a phone call that we were preparing for, which I did release a statement about this on TikTok slash, you know, my Instagram reels. So I'm not, I'm not going to release any names specifically, but I will say that, you know, for the last year, Elfie, Cat, myself have been signed to a major production company. Um, it was, for me, uh, if you look at the work that this particular produ production company has done, it was probably the largest. Um, oh, if you guys have a hard time hearing cat, tell me. You know what I mean? Like if you need it turned up or something, just just say it in the chat and I'll watch you. Okay. Um, anyway, we were signed to the, in my history the biggest production company I've ever been signed to. So I'm 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 still proud of that. That's still something to be proud of. Oh, it's huge. Yeah. It's huge. They've done yeah. major series for um, like ABC, NBC, like major, major television series. They were really sold by me. They were sold by the supernatural aspect. They were sold by me being a female in film. They just really loved my message. And they signed us. And they basically put us, this is very typical, they will put you in a year contract. And in that year contract, they will try to sell and promote you to networks so there's the production studio and that's who actually produces the film which is like the producers the creative minds the editors like all that stuff then you go to the network which is examples travel channel um even discovery uh well discovery is a bigger umbrella uh netflix hulu like all that stuff okay so we were signed to this production company and we were in um a seller's contract for 12 months essentially and we got into a major negotiation last summer with a streaming company. And I will say that it is not the streaming company you think it is. It was not, um, I mean, there's many out there. So I can say it wasn't Hulu or Netflix because everybody knows I love, those are my two favorite picks. But it was a major streamer. And um, we ended up getting locked in a horrible 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 contract with this streamer for how long was it cat we started negotiations february of 2021 and i think it went till eight october months. it was october I think it was like eight months yeah it was, it was a long time it was too long absolutely treacherous so what it, so what does it mean when you're in a contract with a network that's very different okay that's not the same so being signed by a network is one thing being in a contract with them is another so a seller's contract with a network means you are negotiating with said network for a certain amount of time it is unheard of in my opinion with with my past working in production to be in a seller's contract with a network for eight months that does not happen Usually when you start negotiations with a network, it ends and it starts and ends that quick because they're either going to want it or they're not, period. Um, so we were in a horrible, it was the the worst experience. Cat, poor was, cat, poor cat. Poor you. <laughs> poor me. Woo. Poor cat. Poor Elfie's like, I have no, and you know, it's crazy because like, I know, you know, cat has been with me for a while, obviously. So she's, this is not her first rodeo. You know what I mean? But like, El Elfie, yeah, four years July. That's crazy. But Elfie, like, you know, God, this girl has had, she has like 68 episodes under her belt, multiple <laughs> seasons. And, and Elf, so I love that I have Elfie to lean on because she's, she gets it. She gets the full picture. And 
I remember we're in this contract and, and Elfie's like, what the hell is going on? Why is this taking so long? She's like, I've never heard of this. Like we were all just spazzing out. We were on edge. When you're in a seller's uh, contract, like negotiation like that, they are checking your social media. They're watching your every move. If there's, if you, you know, if you have a pet cricket that farts wrong, you know, they're, you're, you're going to get in I trouble. It. Oh yeah. It's, it's crazy. And so everything we were doing for eight months was being critiqued and watched. And it was the worst experience of my life, honest to God. And I've, bad. and I've had bad. some bad contracts, you know that, but that took the cake. That took it was just nonstop. Yeah, yeah, it was. I'm not still pretty. resolving trauma from that. You know what I mean? Um, I'm still d having some issues. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's still some PTSD there. Okay, it's fine. So Those basic. Words are very uh, powerful, people. I'm tired. No. <laughs> what are you gonna say about that? Yeah, that. I, so I went from that negotiation in October to like my dog dying, my mom dying. Like I was like having a full blown out of body experience for all of 2021. <laughs> it was horrible, um, and none of you guys knew a Ugh. thing about it because I can't couldn't talk about it till now. You know what I mean? So anyway, long story short is is here's what happened was, um, you know, we were in this seller's negotiation with a streamer. It was horrible. I will never negotiate with the, these people again my whole life because ever. I don't care if it's 10 years down the road. And it's a major <laughs> streamer, by the way. It's a very major streamer. Uh, it's just bad. And bad. Uh, the production company was also frustrated. It's not the production company's fault. It was not the production company's fault. It was the streamer's fault. So basically the production company, so eight months later, um, I hope you guys are still following me because I know you know you understand film knowledge because you've been following me. So eight months later, the streamer finally says we've made a decision and no, we're not going to we're not going to buy Ghost Girl Diaries. Well, then the production company goes back to the streamer and says, okay, we would like to repurchase Ghost Girl Diaries rights back from you, so that we can now go negotiate with a new streamer or product or uh, network. So they did. The production company purchased our rights back again. And we just knew after that, all three of us knew that it was so exhausting for the production company and us. We knew that they were going to drop us. We just knew it. Yeah, it was it was bad. Like that, that whole experience was out of body and not normal, not normal. Um, so exactly the call was to be expected although you was that incredible. was your first negotiation with an actual network so that was really good experience for you we hadn't gotten mm -hmm. that far with you yet um mm -hmm. but essentially what happened was everyone was tired from an eight month you know sellers negotiate it was horrible it was horrible like I, I can call my friends in LA right now that are producers and they would be like why did it take that long and I'm like I, I don't know I lost an eyeball during that time you know what I mean like I lost <laughs> brain cells it's just rolling out of your so, face <laughs> so we knew they were going to cancel the contract and we've just kind of been sitting on stones waiting for that call and on Monday we got the call from our production company that they have officially dropped us from contract and we're not shocked though we were prepared for this we knew it was going to happen i'm going to be honest and say that it was a bit of relief um because yeah. now we can close that chapter and i can start renegotiating with somebody else you know here's the thing like if anybody's out there and you have tried to do something for years like i've been fault chasing this dragon for so long I just have gotten used to hearing no so much that it doesn't even affect me anymore. <laughs> it's, it's true. Well, and yeah, and, and know how to plan, you know, for moving forward mm -hmm. and, you know, worst case scenario. So we're really not in a bad spot no. at all. No, we're um, not. It's just, it just was going to be what it was going to be. Mm -hmm. well, and, and it would have been worse if we did get signed to that network. It would have been horrible. Oh, I don't even want to think about it. I don't, I don't even it. know if we would have gotten I, signed to them. I don't even think we would have officially gone into production. I think it would have, they would have sat on it 
and I oh, think been waiting. I would have had a heart attack because I definitely don't want Ghost Girl Diaries to be a one season and done. So honestly, everything's meant to be in the end, you know, even if it's hard and even if you're going through a struggle and you're traumatized by it. Um, anyway, we're out of contract and I'm, I'm happy about it. I'm not upset by it. Um, once again, I don't get affected by by being told no. It, you know, I, a lot of people get so scared because we're trained in society to, to be afraid and be in fear if you hear no or give up if, if someone tells you no. Don't give up. Get get your ass back up again. Like I, like I talked about this on social media a few weeks ago. I said, do you know how many times I have publicly failed as a public personality? Like I have failed publicly a lot. My YouTube channel got canceled, got shadow banned, got... You know what I mean? Like there's been so much happen and I just keep getting up going. Like you can't stop. If you're sure of yourself and you're sure of your path, you keep going. Absolutely. 100%. But that was traumatizing. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I have an out of body moment thinking about it. Like every time I'm just like. Is there any out. sort of lessons that you learned through that? You know, e either personally or on a bigger scale that you want to share? Um. No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'm drawing a blank, to be honest. I, on it, that whole experience was just really bad. You know, if anything, um, I learned a little bit more about marketing, to be totally honest with you. <laughs> um, you know, that's it. That's all I learned, um, to be totally honest. Should never deal with that ever again. That is true, though. We did learn about that, marketing, like, behind the scenes. We, we did learn about marketing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh. We really did. You know, and our what are our backups? Yeah. We'll start negotiating again. Kat and I and Elfie just shot a freaking uh, feature documentary <laughs> in February. It's so literally on a whim, and yeah. it's amazing. And I'm not oh, even yeah. worried. I'm not even worried. So you know, like you know, it, it's gonna be fine. So anyway, we, we just no. wanted to talk about it. Yep, keep going. Thank God that's over. You know what I'm saying? Just close the door and keep that going. That crazy train's gone. Woo. We are at the station mm. and we're walking the other way if because the, if the public <laughs> only knew. Woo! I feel like I feel like between us and the production company and the streamer, we all like we're in this trauma pool. I feel like we all experienced just something really bad, and we just needed to step away. I think that's just kind of what happened. Well, I think I learned to go with your gut. Go with your gut. Um, you know, because, yeah. yeah. I mean, go with your gut. And and this time, you know, I'm gonna be sure and sign with a production company and network who's previously done some sort of supernatural or paranormal. I will never go, I'm done. Like I was not specific enough with my manifestations before. Um, I wanted a really massive big production company and I got it. I got it, mm -hmm. I got what I asked for, but they, they don't know about yeah. paranormal film and I was gonna have to go in there and train them from the ground up and they were fine with it. So I got what I wanted, but I wasn't specific enough. And unfortunately, it was it was one of those things where the genre was so new for them. They were like, I don't know how the hell to do paranormal film. And not only did, you know, the production company not know how to do paranormal film, but neither did the streamer. And that was why the negotiation was so hard. Because they're like, then the streamer, you know, unfortunately, we're going to say it again, old Christian white men are like, you want me to give you $1 million for, for a ghost show? You know, <laughs> like, what? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm so from now Very on true. it'll Very be true. yeah i want travel channel or, or netflix still that's what i'm manifesting 100 percent zach zach baggins he's you want to you want to ep with me zach tag us on <laughs> yeah yeah tag everybody us, tag, us on tag us on social say hey zach you should freaking sign ghost girl Diaries. no i really think that that's where we need to be unfortunately he knows what Real, he's doing really no but really yeah, yeah seriously yeah seriously like i it's yeah. I, I don't want to go in and train a, i've decided before I was so positive, I was like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll train the production company and crew on paranormal film, you know, night vision, editing, you know, all that stuff. Audio is really important. I have Ben and Jeff who are my audio and um, audio mixer and my video editor and they're great. Um, and they'll yeah. train you, you know, and, but no, it's too big of a project. This time I've got to freaking go with somebody that already knows what they're doing because it, I just don't want to question it at this point. It's just stupid. Um, and what was the other thing that I said that I learned was the trauma that I learned. Um, <laughs> there, was, there was a lot of it. There was a of, lot of it. Yeah, yeah, marketing, we learned a lot about marketing. We learned a lot about, about ourselves. Marketing. Manifest very, very specific. Manifest very specific. We learned a lot about ourselves. Kat, are you okay? 
I mean, you know, yeah, it's just getting hot. You know, it's getting very hot. Uh, can I, I want to share your trauma because I think people will laugh, okay? Because I just, I, okay. <laughs> your face. Feel free to share. That's all you. I'm not sharing. Okay. Don't share. So, okay. here, so here's where Kat had, like, a heart attack. Yeah, no, I want to be a travel channel. Trust me. I'm already, <laughs> trust me. I'm done. We're not, I'm not, no. My knowledge ain't free, ho, okay? Like, I know what I'm doing but I don't have the time or patience anymore. I'm getting older. I need to get this shit signed and move on with my life, okay? Like, that's my feeling on this, okay? So, yeah, Travel Channel is exactly where it's at. Um, but basically, we had to come up with a, uh, a list of locations is what happened, okay? <laughs> sorry, I shouldn't laugh at you, Kat. I'm sorry. So... Really thinking about it now, though. It's so silly. <sighs> they, they put us in a tizzy for no reason. Yeah, but it's funny. You know, I'm sorry. It's so... <sighs> okay. Okay, realistically, <laughs> folks, I just want you all to know... Her Aries is out. Time, <laughs> I'm just putting... I'm just putting some little tidbits before she finishes. My TikTok handle before it was just Cat Cormier was Spellbound Salem because I live in New Hampshire. I'm crying, I'm literally Kat. an hour. Someone I just said leprechaun hour. foot. I can't. I'm just crying. Oh, we, oh, come on, people. Okay, that is another piece of trauma at a haunted location. Okay. Oh, <laughs> the energy oh. of my foot is left uh, in Jerome with that color uh, is what that really is. I'm okay. still convinced it was a leprechaun. Again, okay? still convinced. It's, no, uh, well, you know what? My foot disagrees um <laughs> my left foot more specifically disagrees um, and now that i'm thinking about it how did it bend that way because i have no idea i literally have no idea uh, you're having ghost so, pains again in anyway your foot. Okay, sorry i do i get like literally i have ghost pains every time you talk about it. <laughs> so bad um, so anyway, my TikTok handle is Spellbound Salem because I frequent in Salem. I, I still do. I, it's an hour from me, literally. Um, talk about all the time, whatever. So <laughs> on one of the locations list, without saying what it is, you know, there's a location in Salem. No, just say there's it. Yeah, there, yeah, there was, we, we, we came up with a faux list of locations for season one and, and Salem was on the list. And Salem was on the list. So, um. Keep in mind my my handle and where I'm located, and now you can continue. Okay, <laughs> bye. Continue. So so we have this faux list of locations that Elfie 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 picked four. I picked four. Cat picked four. Of course, Cat picked the, the Salem location. Of course, I picked Salem because <laughs> yes. Yeah. Elfie was like all over the place. She had some really good ones. I picked indigenous locations, including Skinwalkers. Of course, I did. Let's go to the Skinwalker Ranch. But anyway. Um, yeah, that sounds like a bad idea now after what we experienced in February. Um, yeah. So Kat has a, uh, you know, her her name is Salem. She lives East Coast. She loves Salem content. She, and it, it is funny. It's not funny. I mean, now it's funny. It wasn't at the time. So, I mean, now it's funny. When it was happening, it was not funny. She went to Salem, and she, she filmed a couple of really great videos. And one of her videos happened to get, like, a million views, right? Two of them. Literally two of them. So I had, okay. Mind you, of course, I would never film at the location. I did not film at the location. I filmed at a couple of small businesses. It was like the Salem Witch Museum and something else. Mm -hmm. And both videos, I don't even know what it was, went to like 500K mm -hmm. and growing within a matter of like two days. Mm -hmm. And that's how I grew my following to where it's at now at a little over 8,000. Um, wait, I wasn't expecting it. But while it we're in negotiations with the network... <laughs> With the network, it happened. Now we're in negotiations with the network. Um, yeah, so now I can continue. So <laughs> she's getting triggered. So she, and I, of course, I'm, I'm happy. It's so silly. I'm happy yeah. for her because she's got, you know, it was, a, it was an accidental video. You never know what's going to go viral or whatever. But now, remember, when you're in negotiations with the network to sell the series, they're watching your every move. So they see that Kat went and filmed in Salem. And she's gotten a million views on a couple of videos. And now the net. It doesn't matter it was not the location. It wasn't at the location. Coincidence, it was just accident, just a anyway, yeah. the, the network had a, had a meltdown. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh. Their, no, they lost their shit. And essentially, they. the long story short of it was they had concerns of me being a producer and knowing info. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing because that's not like, who Kat is. Yeah, I know. 
I know. No, and of course, like, you know, when group chat was going on, even Elfie was like, they do know her handle is Spellbound Salem, right? They know that she lives an hour from Salem, right? Like, you know, it's just, it was, it was really bizarre and silly. But when those things happen, it catches you off guard because they were really mad. And Crystal was in that meeting and got the brash of it. And I was like sobbing. <laughs> yeah, poor sobbing. cat. I was, yeah, but I tried to handle it so delicately with you. And I was like, I called you and I was like, well, <laughs> she's like, what are you doing? I was like, sitting in my bedroom in the dark. And she's like, why? I was like, it was a really bad <laughs> meeting. It was like really bad. Basically, like their their thought pro and you know I'm only sharing this so that people understand this side of film because we're now we're in this isn't even production company ne negotiations we've already been signed to that this is network negotiations basically their concern was if Cat has a list of the locations before we filmed she's gonna go film there and post it on her social media before the season approaches. So, I mean, in a way, you can see where their concern was. You do see that, but you're right. It yeah. wasn't the yeah. exact location. And we weren't in, and we weren't in con official contract with them. You know well, what I mean? like, preliminary, I know, preliminary. It was, so it was preliminary. Yeah. yeah, but that's the problem, and that's why I wanted to share it, is that when you're in these negotiations with these networks, what they say goes, period. And yeah, yeah, they don't care. They, they don't, don't care. care. They do not care. They don't care you live an hour away. They don't care about your handle. They don't care about your intentions. It's It happened. And and they were like, shut it down. Shut it down. And then she then and she I changed pain, her. And I painstakingly did. And I painstakingly I did. Oh, my God. No, I didn't tell you to. I told you no. to, like, private them temporarily yeah. or something. Right. And you were like, yeah. no, I don't want to. <laughs> just like, oh my god, I mean, it was just, but it's crazy. My point is, is that when you're dealing with these executives who do have millions of dollars, they just, you're right, they don't care. They just don't care. They're like, do you want the money for your series or not, essentially is what they're saying. And uh, it was trauma. It was a lot of trauma. I was sobbing for like days. I was, I was sobbing for days. Well, yeah, because they made you feel like it was... I tried, I was so delicate with Kat, I swear to God I was. I, I was, did not want you to take it personally. It wasn't her, no, it was, it was the net, it was just the fact that they had, were looking at my stuff. Well, it's one thing to hear that they look at your stuff, but then when they bring it up in a meeting, you're like, oh, oh, oh no. Well, oh. it wasn't, I think what you were upset about was it wasn't only you at stake personally, because they did recommend me removing her, okay? which is not going to happen over my dead body. I was like, well, just close the negotiations and we'll move on to something else. But basically they said, well, then we'll just shut the whole series down. And, we'll, and so it was just a mess. And so then I think that's where Kat felt guilty, where she thought she was causing all of us to suffer. And Elfie and I are like, no, calm down. Like, it's not, you know what I mean? But it is, it's weird. And, but I, it, I do have to say, though, experiencing that was really good for you. Because they are, that was your first official, you know, negotiation with a network. And even Elfie was like, they are tough as nails. They don't care. They just don't care. Yeah. Yep. That was apparent. That was apparent. That was really apparent. <laughs> yep. So moving on. Here we are. And now moving on. We got it. We made it. We and survived. it is. That's why we're like, okay, <laughs> this negotiation, we're, we're done with that. It's behind us. <laughs> Don't shoot me. It's fine. I would, I'll, I would always uh, be, I will be open to, sh to negotiating with Hulu and Netflix, but nobody else, <laughs> and travel and discovery, and that's about it. Um, yeah. And that's it. So yeah, who we, who we were negotiating with was horrible. And so moving on to that, that was the end of that, and thank God it's over. And my 2021 uh, sucked. How was yours? No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Then, then your lizard died. Uh, My God. Okay. And Lily passed away. It was so sad. God, can we just move past all this dark shit, honestly? Um, oh, we're about to walk into some more dark shit with this, with this topic. <laughs> now it's time for the, the, the paranormal tea, right? Now it's time for the paranormal tea. Well, I mean, that was some tea. Yeah. That was some good tea. Anyway, it, I know a lot of people have been messaging me, asking me if I'm okay, um, you know, with the contract ending, I'm fine. I'm not upset. It's not the first time it's happened. It doesn't mean it's going to stop me from going. And thank you guys for being so supportive online. Oh, let's talk about social media really quickly. Um, TikTok's kicking butt. And I haven't even really been posting well. Um, 
over the last this last week was kind of weird but we're already at almost 13k holler it's going up it's amazing yeah we've it's had amazing. a couple of viral videos on there one went up to 37k i was like okay this is good this is good mm-hmm Mm-hmm. TikTok's so random though like you never know like I usually batch a bunch of content and I'll post like five to ten videos at once on Ghost Girl Diaries TikTok and you never know what's gonna go isn't it weird how the algorithm works on there yeah it's just unpredictable it is, it is. and you there's no telling what's gonna happen there really isn't You've just got to kind of post and then just get off the app. And then well, just, yeah. You know, see what happens. I have a video on there that I posted like a week or two ago. And it's of me like making fun of like when I was a cheerleader and I was like alt and I didn't fit in. And yeah. it was only at like 200 views. And then today, out of all days, I don't know why, it's up to 19K. And I'm like, it's like a what? seven second video. And I, 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 I didn't even take... It's not even good. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's not even good. People are weird. People are uh, weird. Yeah. yeah. So anyway. It's so funny. TikTok's weird. Hey, run with it. I guess. Whatever. It's exciting. Yeah. Except then you get the trolls coming on and they're like, were you one of those girls in school? And you're just like, oh, thanks for boosting my algorithm. So. Yeah. I'm going to like your comment and not respond, but thank you oh, for oh, your that, engagement. That's what I wanted to talk about. Ghost Girl Diaries TikTok. So it's at 13K, which when it gets to that point, you're starting to get a lot of people, you know, comment and follow you, right? We have made it as a paranormal TikTok. We've made it onto Christian talk. What? Remember? Wait a minute. Because there's people coming on there telling us that we need to read the Bible. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, (laughs) that is true. Oh, my gosh. I was monitoring. Yes. I was monitoring the comment. I was looking at the comments the other day, and I was like, oh, my gosh. I, honestly, I skip over them because religious trauma. So you can go through, <laughs> like, those ones. <laughs> no, I'm not. But we don't block them. But there's there's people that come. It's, no. But that means we've made it. You know what I mean? Like, you don't want to block it out. We made it on a Christian talk. That's true. You don't want to yeah. block it out. Unfortunately. Yeah, you need it. Because, mm-hmm. You know, even your haters aren't your haters. They're your biggest fans. You yeah. know, you I mean, know I don't that. know about Christians. <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> I mean, look, okay, uh, we're not going to get on that soapbox again. Oh, Kat is, is going to get on her religious box, and then it's no, over with for the night. We're not. Uh, you know. We do have another yeah. spiritual box to get on, though. We do. And uh, it is it, called the Iowa, Iowa... Why do I keep saying... Okay, I had a stroke earlier. I, <laughs> I was... I, seriously, I was driving earlier, okay, in Vegas. I'm serious. I'm not. This is a real story. I was driving on the highway. I was in the middle lane. <laughs> I'm actually driving. And I, okay, I'm living in a higher elevation now in Vegas because I, I live on the mountainside. And I think that my <laughs> my body's not used to it. I was driving <laughs> and like my like ear popped in the back of my head. You know what I mean? When that feels like. And yeah. my equilibrium went off <laughs> and I thought I was going to wreck my Jeep. <laughs> and I like hurried up and got off the highway because I was like dizzy. <laughs> And I'm it's not funny. I, I was we're laughing. It's not funny. Oh. It's um, not funny. And I was started like talking out loud. I was like, bitch, are you okay? Bitch, are you? I'm driving. I've got like something. Bitch, are you okay? Make it <laughs> pull off the road. Don't get a wreck. And I started slurring my words. I swear. And Kat's like, do you smell burnt toast? <laughs> Make sure she wasn't having a stroke, okay? So, no, I didn't it was ha- a legit concern. I it didn't, I didn't have a, stro- I didn't have a stroke, but I, I am having too. a hard time saying ayahuasca. 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 Why am I calling it ayahuasca? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, ayahuasca. Is that right? Ayahuasca. 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 I was saying it fine until my stroke happened behind the wheel. Um, there was no stroke, folks. No, there wasn't. Seriously. No, no, there wasn't. No Seriously, way. everybody calm down. <laughs> it's fine. Everyone's fine. Um, <laughs> so fine. we heard about this started kind of blowing up through social media, um, predominantly through like Megan Fox and MGK. But once they kind of came public with their discussion on their experience with this, which we'll talk about it. So I know if you don't know what I'm talking about, you'll we'll cover it. Um, and we started doing research on it, not only watching other people, um, their experience that they put on TikTok, but also we started watching documentaries on it. And shit got real weird real fast, I feel like, you know what I mean? So let me, okay, first of all, I'm gonna state this. Ayahuasca, did I say it right? Ayahuasca. 
Ayahuasca, yeah. Ayahuasca is a plant that you can ingest in native indigenous cultures, uh, predominantly Central America and Southern America, okay? It is technically considered a drug, which is why you can't get it here in the United States. I'm going to state this first and foremost, and I'm going to keep repeating it through the stream, and so is Kat, okay? We are not promoting this in any way. I am not promoting this. I am wanting to talk about the spiritual practice behind it. And of course, you're going to get Kat and I's opinion on it because we have a lot. We have a lot of opinions. Um, but <laughs> we I, like opinions. Yeah. Well, and I think that's why I wanted to do research on it, too. And I think you did, too. Is like there's all these people promoting it on social mm -hmm. media. And should they be? You right. know what I mean? Like you're promoting people to go to retreats and literally like ingest a drug that causes you to hallucinate for up to 12 hours. What And it's supposed to be this like grand spiritual experience. So anyway, right. now let's talk about this first. What was your initial opinion, just not, not doing research on what ayahuasca was before you researched it? What, what did you think it was? Um, just like an intense hallucinogenic, like that, that had you go into like a deep, a deep trance-like state. Like a meditative. All I really, yeah, like a meditative state. Which, honestly, like, I mean, it's not a com it's not a complete comparison. I guess it's not a really good comparison, but, like, when you think about herbs and, you know, hallucinogenics, you, I think of mugwort. Mm -hmm. You know, using that in my practice, I don't ingest it or put it in any, you know, my tea or anything like that, but mm -hmm. um, it helps with dreams. Helps you remember dreams if you have, like, a dried bundle of mugwort above your bed or underneath your pillow. Um, so I just assumed it was something of that regard, Similar. That, you know, you ingest it. Yeah. 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 Same. I mean, I saw the interviews, which we're going to talk about all that stuff too, in case you're not familiar with what's going on. Um, and once again, I've heard, I've literally had people's TikToks pop up on our page talking about their spiritual experience with ayahuasca and, you know, not always pleasant. And I was just like, what is this? Like, I feel like, you know, if it's going, if it's making a round on social media and it's really becoming this big thing to the point where people are actually traveling out of the country to be a part of these like indigenous tribes and retreats and like have the, this spirit grand, once again, grand spiritual experience, what does that mean? And why are you doing it? And um, <clears throat> Kat and I were kind of caught off guard because we hadn't done research on it, obviously. We were just going off. MGK, Megan Fox. I, I love Megan Fox. Obviously, I'm a huge fan of Megan Fox. Love her fashion, by the way. Follow her designer. Um, her stylist is amazing, um, which is, has nothing to do with hallucinogenic, but at least she looked fabulous <laughs> while she was know. doing it. You know yeah, what I mean? Um, she looked amazing while she was vomiting. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> so we start doing this research, and you and I are shocked about it because and I have all the notes in front of me. So if you see me like reading, Kat's doing it too, because there's a lot, <laughs> a lot to cover here. There's a lot to cover. There's a lot yeah. going on. Um, I want to strip it back to what it really is. So essentially, it is an indigenous plant. And, and we'll go in depth on, on her. It's literally a her. Okay, we'll go in depth on that. It's an indigenous plant that um, it, it's in several parts of the world. But most people fly to Costa Rica. It's available at some retreats in Mexico. Um, it's also in South America, predominantly per Peru. And when you go to these retreats, you are um, overseen by a shaman. And it's usually a shaman that is very well versed in this uh, herb, this plant, okay? Um, and essentially, it's described as <clears throat> having 10 years of therapy in one night. And it can be considered a healing journey where, you know, I would say it's like doing shadow work, right? Like we promote shadow work all the time, oh. except instead of you doing it yourself, you, <laughs> the herb is doing the shadow work for you essentially. So if you have any demons, yeah. whatever that is, you know, Kat and I've talked about our generational curses and, and other people's generational curses, you know, like massive trauma, like... Um, if you were a child and you experienced molestation, like massive trauma, they, they promote this plant that if you go, you know, to this shaman and take it, it will help you undo the damage that you've had. There's another side of it um, that I've heard because I'm, I'm in a friend circle of, with veterans, okay? And um, the veterans will travel to these locations who have um, depression, 
anxiety, <clears throat> PTSD, sometimes even like bipolar, and uh, I, I don't know if schizophrenics have tried it before or not, but they oh they claim <laughs> they claim <laughs> Jesus, they claim <laughs> that if you go to these locations and you partake in this retreat, that it can actually heal depression, anxiety. Uh, PTSD, all this stuff. Now, you're not supposed to take it with your antipsychotics. Uh, And this is word of mouth. I've actually talked to veterans that know this. So you have to literally wean yourself off the antipsychotics for six to eight weeks, go completely unmedicated somehow to the middle of the Amazon forest and pray to God that you get there. And... (laughs) And then go ahead and go through your ayahuasca therapy. You know what I'm saying? So the main, (laughs) I'm sorry, we're going to laugh a lot through this because it's just, this, this is strange. It's It's strange to us. Um, And we're not laughing at medication or mental illness. And, and, and we're not laughing at the indigenous tribe either. We're laughing that, you know, (sighs) the process, okay? Just the process. It's just very cooling and teeter-tottering on the edge of insanity but it's fine you know (laughs) i want to start i'm gonna let you tangent too in a second i just want to say one more thing so essentially ayahuasca is a uh you know organically grown herb right and it has um it, it contains something called dmt which has also been going around that some shrooms contain like having a dmt trip okay a dmt trip it, it's also known as dimitri um, which is weird because i if i had a son i was going to name him dimitri now i can't name my son dimitri because it represents dmt okay um okay but like i think of anastasia really dimitri was that's like, creepy oh man he was Oh, such a, such a, like a big crush, such a big crush. See, I want, if I had a son, I wanted to name him Damon, because of course, of course I wanted to name him Damon, and I wanted to spell it like the demonic way, D-A-E-M-E-N, like weird Damon, you know what I mean? Or Dimitri, or together, but now I'm like, I don't, can't do that. Anyway, DMT is, um, it's a psychedelic drug, and it's, it basically is like LSD, and it's in magic mushrooms, okay? Once again, we are not promoting you taking this in any way. I would never say that. And if you're going to ask me if I would partake in this, I would never partake in this because I'm a control freak and I do not like to feel out of control. I've never tried drugs. So, um, and definitely would not try LSD. Um, I have witnessed people though on, on some of these drugs. So we'll talk about that later in the stream. But, um, so Kat, you got really into this. You got really into this because you are, you know, Hispanic. So you are, you know, you have Hispanic indigenous genes. You've had the DNA done. And so you didn't realize this had such deep roots um, going into this. When you see, <clears throat> I want you to summon up the MGK interview on Jimmy Kimmel and uh, the Megan Fox one. Because when you see their okay. initial interviews, you don't realize it goes as deep as it really does. So I think we should start with, with where this, I think this started getting so highly promoted because of MGK yeah. and Megan Fox. Do you? I do. I do. Um, so Megan Fox and MGK were interviewed like six months apart from each other talking about their ayahuasca experience. Mm-hmm. Megan Fox brought it up first. Um, this was back in like July of 2021. Uh, she explained that she went to Costa Rica with MGK to drink ayahuasca, and she thought, I, it's, so in, it's so bizarre, but she thought that, like, drinking tea with indigenous people was going to be considered glamping. That's verbatim, like, what she said in the interview. She, she wasn't expecting to, like, be in the middle of the jungle and walking all these miles to get to their destination and be with 20 strangers and, like, literally have nothing, because um, that's ended up, what ended up happening. Um, she said there was nothing glamorous about it. She also said that when they got to the location, which was in this random part of the jungle, um, that they were not allowed to eat past 1 p.m. and they were with a group of strangers. And the reason why you are not allowed to eat past a certain time is because the ayahuasca um, herbs um, and plant makes you very sick, makes you, can make you very physically ill. Um, so, you know, the folks that were running the retreat wanted to make sure that nobody got sick and they weren't allowed to eat past a certain time. Now, on top of them not being able to eat past 1 p.m., 
they also had to like re-empty their stomach. <clears throat> it's just getting really nasty. Um, and they had to literally empty the, everything out of their stomach, is what she said. Um, so they were take. So there's a group of twenty, and they were lined up in groups of three, is what she said, by the river's edge, and they drank um, lemongrass tea until they literally vomited everything out of their system. And she said it was a really, and it was strange the way she mentioned it too, because she was like, it was a very strange bonding experience. <laughs> she said it was bonding That's one way to say it. I, yeah, she was like, we were cheering everybody on for like getting sick and like, you know, because we were getting ready for this ritual. And I'm like, this is messed up. Like, this is like a horror movie in real life. Like, this is nuts. Um, and she said that it helped. She said that her experience with ayahuasca was a three day retreat. So they take it for three days or three nights, excuse me. Um, helped where therapy and hypnotherapy didn't. So she she was already in the process of trying to get the help that she needed, and she felt that it didn't meet where she needed it to be, so she went to, you know, this retreat to take ayahuasca. So that was her experience. Now, she also said that her first day of taking ayahuasca, she, she, it was great. It was butterflies and rainbows. Um, really, really beautiful experience. However, the second night, she said that she was literally, like, stuck in hell. Mm -hmm. uh, she said she traveled to hell she, and could not get she back. She traveled to hell and she, she couldn't get out. And she was terrified. So when the third day happened, MGK talks about this in his interview, which I'll explain in a second, um, that, like, she, she wanted to go home. She's like, I can't handle this. She's like, I can't go back there. I can't go back there. No, wait a she, second. The end up this depends on the retreat. Some, so someone said you have to follow a special diet. Some places, yes. Some places, no. Some places say that six to eight weeks before you travel to Peru, you have to be only on a vegetarian diet. But some places don't yeah. care, and you can show up still with Taco Bell in your stomach, and you're going to be shitting your brains out. You know what I'm saying? From ayahuasca. Oh, or bad. something. No. Okay. <laughs> so, but, no, but okay, she no. said she traveled to hell and could not get out. So some of these retreats are a one-and-done experience because we researched it. Some of the retreats, like the one that right. MGK and Megan went to, is a week-long experience. And you have to go every day for a week and, and ingest this because they believe that each day that you ingest it, the more demonic entities that you're purging from your shadow self. You're basically purging right. your shadow self. So by the right. third day, you're saying she could not go back. She couldn't handle it, and she, she did end up staying and doing it and dealing with it. Um, but she, she said that she left feeling weightless and a different person. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting with MGK's interview because it, they, were, they were both interviewed at Jimmy Kimmel. So Jimmy actually was the one that brought it up to MGK, who had an interview this year talking about it, um, because Jimmy had questions based off of Megan's interview about their ayahuasca experience. So... Um, he went, you know, everybody gets in line to uh, take take their tea before they go to sit down, and they take it as a group. And this is the um, ayahuasca tea, the actual ayahuasca. This is the ayahuasca tea, yeah. And the shaman looked at MGK and told him, quote, you have a big shadow of darkness around you. You need more. And proceeded to hand him four cup, four cups of ayahuasca tea, uh, which is just, I just feel is just very dangerous. <laughs> um, considering one one cup is, is enough to have somebody go into the depths of hell, I can't imagine four. Mm -hmm. It's like a medical concern there. <laughs> um, just a little, you know, it's questionable. Um, so, he, but he stated it was a really important moment in his life. Um, you know, to have that experience and that he also felt extremely changed leaving that retreat. Mm -hmm. And he, it, it was interesting because she seemed to be, Megan seemed to be the one pushing to like go and experience this and MGK wasn't. Mm -hmm. And I'm very curious. I, I think, I think he might've been given a little too much. Okay. <laughs> is kind of my, my guess on that. I can't imagine that. Oh, I, I can't imagine being handed four cups of tea. I, what? What? No, I'm just... You, oh. The tea, and, and, you know, we've watched documentaries on this, multiple documentaries. 
most people, it makes you, the tea is pungent. It's bitter, sour tasting. Once again, it depends on how it's steeped. I don't know. I don't. I'm not down there. I have no, no idea. Root. It's a root. Ob- yeah. And also, I mean, I'm just gonna be real. Like they're in the depths of like the middle of nowhere, Peru. It, it can't be that sanitary. And let's just be honest, you know, going out there could be deathly ill from E. coli or something on top of that. You know, I'm sorry. I'm just being real. And uh, you have no idea what's been in that pot. It's probably no soap. You know what I mean? And but most people that drink the ayahuasca get violently ill after they drink it. Like they said in these few documentaries, you can tolerate it in your stomach. Once again, you're fasting or you've puked up, you know, anything that's in there already. So now you're like totally on an empty stomach. This ayahuasca, they said it's, it's horrible. It's pungent, bitter, gross. And literally within five minutes, 90% of people vomited up. And the, you're actually handed a bucket when you're at this retreat, when you sit down to like experience this. And you, most people just start violently vomiting it up. Now, by this time, it's too late because the root of the DMT has already gone into your bloodstream especially think about your stomach like that's a direct route right into your bloodstream you know what i mean so you yeah. might have thrown yep. it up but it, do, it doesn't matter it's too late you're already on, on experiencing this um there is a shaman that's usually involved with these retreats and the shaman will usually start singing some sort of an indigenous song depending on the tribe that you're with and uh there what i saw on the few documentaries was they are leading you into uh the other side was literally how it was worded. So you're experiencing a paranormal spiritual journey while you're hallucinating essentially. And, uh, and we're not done yet. Don't think we're done. This is, this is the, no. this is the first part of it. We're not even halfway done here. I'm not even a quarter of the way through. Um, yeah. you, you, you talk about her as a divine feminine and how she's worshiped. Yeah, so they, I know in all of the documentaries, it's it was stated that it's believed that the, there's a resident spirit that lives inside the plant. I'm sorry, just wait. Seen... I need you just to wait a second. I'm, okay. I want you to repeat that, but because I, I want to make sure everybody hears that. But also, someone just said I'm a germaphobe. I can't do it. Me too. I am. I'm a freak. I have OCD. I have problem. Cat, you know I do. When no, you I, I when, when I, you I, come I to stay at my house, I I clean constantly, don't you? I am a clean freak. I'm a psychotic clean freak. I have dogs. I'm a clean freak. I am constantly cleaning, which is why I wouldn't be able to take it because I'm like, is that pan clean, yo? Like, do you scrub that with some Dawn soap? Don't you worry, I brought some. <laughs> I was going to say that. I was like, do we use some Dawn? Do we need hot water? Is there hot? Is there running water? No, there's no no clean water. Oh, can you boil some? And like cook that? You know what I mean? Um, so anyway, okay, wait, seriously, I know we're laughing, but seriously, this is important. You just said there is the, the indigenous tribes, and this is worldwide, this is not just one tribe, believe there is a female spirit that is ayahuasca. Yes, it is believed, uh, this is what I wrote down from the actual, like, word for word documentary. It is believed that there is a resident spirit that lives in the plant that's seen as a personal therapist that guides you through your shadow journey. She's known as Mother Ayahuasca, a divine feminine energy and the first woman of creation. And they literally refer to the plant as she. So, like, she is given to them to help heal them. She is made in this way. Um, it's really, it's really, that really fascinated me. That really, really fascinated me. So the plant itself is a she. It's a being. It's a, she. it's a creature. And even if you don't believe this, it doesn't matter. Because the indigenous people that have been holding the sacred for God knows how many hundreds of years, they even if she isn't real to you, she has been created by these indigenous people. So you are ingesting this spirit. And you guys, you know how serious I am when it comes to paranormal. I believe she exists. 100% I believe she exists. Because I told you about this concept that I did at the Stanley Hotel. Caffeinated Christy and I should be best friends because she said I hate camping too and I have control issues. (laughs) I love camping. I do love camping. Uh, I like glamping. I'm not a, to me camping is in a hotel room. I need an outlet for my flat iron. Aww. You know, um, 
I also need room That's service. The in the car. Yeah. Um, oh my god. Well, no, I would stay in like a fancy RV, but I'm just not. I'm not a. I, I don't. I don't sleep on the ground. That's not something Crystal does. No. Okay? <laughs> no. Sorry. Um, I don't mind. This it. ayahuasca thing would not work for me. Um, <laughs> sorry. Just the truth. Not today. Not today. So you know, we I, there was this thing we did at the Stanley Hotel, which was a, enough people started believing that this little girl haunted the the big office at the Stanley Hotel. It's an office building, massive. There were no entities that were in there previously. After we started getting hundreds of people on tours to believe there was a little female spirit, guess what started coming through on the spirit box? A little female spirit. So you're telling me that they, they've named this divine feminine, which is a very massive title, by the way. That is like of creation. She is a divine feminine female that houses this plant of mother ayahuasca. You... You're ingesting something seriously sacred here. Like, this is a worshipped, not only plant, but, like, thing, being. You could almost call her a goddess that you're ingesting. And, um, and, and resident spirit. The fascinating thing, though, is that Kat and I were researching this more, like, because we were just going down a rabbit hole with this. Um, <laughs> people that have had experiences taking ayahuasca truly believe they've spoken to mother ayahuasca and and there were um shamans that were on this documentary as well explaining what the feeling is like when you take the ayahuasca and you take her in is essentially how they were wording it is that you know she so she guides you through your shadow journey so whatever shadows you have or traumas that you're removing or releasing from your life through this tea they said that it physically pains people on their skin sometimes too like it feels like their skin is being ripped because she is physically removing that trauma from your vessel mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so they sometimes feel their skin even <laughs> it, it's not really but caffeinated like, christy you know, said cool that's all <laughs> she's like cool what she said all she said was cool <laughs> jesus um but it's tr like it's it's legit mm -hmm. yeah it's no crazy. i believe it i believe it i'm not saying i don't I believe, believe it, it. Too. i'm just uh -huh. saying i would rather do shadow work for five years i'm good um i'd, I'd rather go to therapy <laughs> personally i'd yeah. rather go to therapy no there's a lot uh and i don't you know if somebody wants to do this you you get it boo i'm not judge i don't care what people do with themselves you know what i mean like is it something that i'm interested in absolutely not is it something i respect 100 percent um, just because I do believe in the other side and all this stuff, you know, but let's start tearing this apart <laughs> because it's what we do. Um, I, I, cause, cause this was Kat and I on the phone. We've talked for days about this. First of all, let's start with this bitch right here does not have a gallbladder. Okay. I cannot eat a lot of food. Seriously. There's a lot of food I can't eat. It will make me physically sick. I get chest pains. They call them ghost pains. Like when you, I don't know if you, anyone that's watching has ever had their gallbladder removed, but it will, it causes chest pain when your gallbladder goes out. So if I eat the wrong foods, it causes serious chest pain. I, I throw up and yeah, I've had, a, you know, the occasional IBS problems. I know you, we all have IBS <laughs> problems. You eat the wrong thing, man, you're in the toilet five minutes later. It's just oh. a human thing. Bad news bear. So it's bad news bear. So yeah, my, so you know. So my question is, is like, okay, so you're throwing up, you're emptying out your stomach. Now you're going to take ayahuasca. Now you're throwing up again. What if you got the shards? What? Yeah, what happens? Do they give you like, what if they give you like a dress or something? Because <laughs> <laughs> what if it's like that ends? A dress? What? A dress what? won't hold it in. You would need like a diaper. No, not a... I know, but it... But, but it would need somewhere to go, is what I'm saying. In the dress? A dress has an opening no, at like, the bottom. Like, I know, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's just like, you need something to just, like, go. Like, you need an opening for it to go somewhere instead of your pants. Pantaloons. You're in the middle of the jungle. Like, no one's going to give you a diaper. So, wait, you're telling me that there's 30 to... It's, okay, some retreats are very small. If you're trying to go to a, a, the MGK retreat with, like, 10 to 30 people, very expensive. If you're going to yeah. a bigger retreat with 80 people, so you're telling me there's 80 people sitting around vomiting with each other and shitting themselves? Can you imagine the stench of throwing up 
lemongrass tea, throwing up ayahuasca, and sharding. That would also make me throw up with 80 people. My God. They are probably I would just ask Ayahuasca to take oh me with her right now. Just cross me over. Please just take me. Now, I, take now me. I have more trauma from this Ayahuasca, okay? Like, help me, bitch. Like, Jesus. Well, you know what it is, though? And I don't know why I just thought heard this, but I heard ego. It's like ego death. You mean the like, toilet part? Like, well, yeah. Like, meaning, like, it doesn't matter what happens to your vessel. Like, that's not the point. Is, is probably what they're thinking is, you know, w within the ritual. But within our human self... Okay, wait like a second. Ego, so, wait a second. Wait a second. I'm sorry. So you're saying when you shit yourself, your ego's coming out? Is you're, you're detoxifying yourself? Like, as in, were you're self-conscious about it. Whoa, I guess. Meaning, like, yeah. Even if like, I was like, hallucinating, yeah. I would still be upset. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You well, no, I mean, I would, I would be too. I'm just saying in general, like, I'm sure that their reasoning behind it is to like let everything else go, like, like don't be self conscious, yeah. don't think about let it, let it it's flow, a let it, like, flow. literally, let it flow. All orifices, yeah. 100, percent just let it. <laughs> every go. orifice, yes, every orifice. It, I, you know, <laughs> all set. I mean, I personally am all set. I would not want things coming out of my orifices <laughs> yeah. after a cheese with with 80 people. <laughs> Okay. No, that would be my, like, you know, it would, you know, I'm the one, like, literally, I'm not even kidding, my doctor, I've been going to, I have this endocrinologist that I've been going to for years, I love him, by the way, and um, he, he's a specialist, he's the doctor I've talked about that um, he swears he's treated, like, people at Area 51 and stuff at, in Vegas, so anyway, he, he always laughs at me because he's always like, you always get the, like, 1% bad like the, the the worst case scenario that can happen to you from taking a medication always happens to me <laughs> every time <laughs> and like that would be me in this jungle like I didn't I didn't oh. hallucinate I didn't throw up but the IBS was another problem you know what I'm saying like and you're right Honestly, I don't know if I'd make it I don't know if I'd make it to be honest well okay so anyway I mean, so, no, like, I'm, I'm serious, like, I'm painting a picture because I want people to really think about it, because I feel like, you know, some people don't realize, like, this could cause more problems than what it's worth, you know what I mean? Like, Jesus, like, and, in, in, you know, and once again, we don't know how, I do have OCD, I am a clean freak, you don't know how it's being cooked, we, they say that it's only two to three ingredients, depending on... Um, the tribe that's that's creating it. You don't know what's in it though. You don't know how it's really being created. You're not there um, And obviously it should be respected because it's you know an indigenous herb. I'm indigenous. So I, I respect it um, Where should we go next with this? There's so much to cover here. My god. It's just we, um, we covered the poo-poo yeah. soup We got the poo-poo soup done um, Yes, that really does scare me though. Like that would be my greatest fear is just like, you know, what if you're in the middle of the poop? <laughs> No, no, <laughs> Jesus, God! If you're in the middle of the oh. Amazon, and no, and what if it's not? What if it's not just the shits? What if it's not the Hershey squirts? What if it's you accidentally got some? For me, I would have gotten some like random intestinal, you know, parasite, and I'm I have two hours to get to a doctor, and I'm three hour boat ride out from the city. Like that, you know what I mean? Like that's what would scare me is the weird shit. Honestly, what would scare me is I'd probably go out like alien style with like a spider on my face and <laughs> like that's my worst nightmare. <laughs> like that's literally my worst nightmare, okay? Well, and you but know what? Just... Can I just say like Kat and I have been through some shit together, right? Like we she ha she has she's she's my sister, period. She's not my friend, she's my sister. And we've gotten on each other's nerves. We've fought, we've not <laughs> talked, who cares? You know, it just happens. But like you know, my mom died, her lizard died, like, we've had trauma we've experienced together. But I can say with with uttermost confidence that I do not want to stand by you at a river holding your hand, vomiting up lemongrass tea. No, that, that doesn't sound like a fun afternoon. Um, that tea party is messed up. I don't want that tea party. Forcefully throwing up. I don't like to throw. I don't no. like to be sick, though. And it's to me, this is a lot of work to go through 10, 10 years of therapy in one night. My God. And it is. And, like, and this is, like, our opinion. You know, this isn't us poo-pooing the ritual itself. <laughs> poo like, you know, it's a legit... <laughs> it's a... 
pun intended. You know, it's not, we, we believe it. We oh, believe yeah. in Mother yeah, Ayahuasca and like we believe in all its properties. We're just saying personally, we probably wouldn't. Mm-hmm. We probably wouldn't. Mm-hmm. And, and we're spreading awareness as to what it actually is because there's a lot of misinformation out there. And if you're not ready or don't know what to expect when you get there, like this could have some deadly circumstances here. It like looks, legit health issues. A lot of people that I've seen talk about, other than, you know, Megan Fox said, you know, I traveled to hell and came back. But a lot of people make it look glamorous. And that's why, and I think that that's why you and I went into this thinking it was like people taking shrooms or something. Right. And and well, so we were just like, oh, it's just like, it's just like a hallucinogenic tea. We didn't realize like it's like a ritual. Like it's an actual ritual. It, yeah, it's a legit thing. And here's the thing, though, too, and this is what was mentioned in the documentaries, is a lot of these shamans and, you know, people that are helping run these these um, retreats is saying that a lot of these people are coming out to experience ayahuasca because of the visual aspect of it. So they think of hallucinating in shrooms, probably, and they think it's like, oh, it's just another, like, trip, when it's really not. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really, really not. And that's a really big amount that's a really big thing to leave out Mm -hmm. especially you know if there's a health if there's a health concern and a lot of the times some people might have it glamorized because they did have a good experience it they're not every experience with ayahuasca for certain people is all bad it it just it depends on the person which is also why it's kind of scary because you just don't know what you're going to be handed well, you, I, you have no idea. I've, it's, I've it's... watched a few, like quite a few. I would say 10 to 15, more 15, probably about 15 people experience like what they went through. And honestly, mm-hmm. only one or two of those were good. Only one or two of those were good. Yeah. And that includes Megan mm-hmm. Fox saying one night was great. The next night, most people say they literally hallucinated for 12 hours to the point where they knew that like, you know, the tea had digested whatever that they didn't throw up. But they still couldn't stop hallucinating, so the hallucinogenic factors just kept going and going. And then they said that they tried to get some sleep in the middle of the night, and then they got, like, paranoia, fears of, like, hearing, you know, like, rustling in, like, the jungle, which I would. I would be so paranoid. That's why I've never done drugs. I would... I'm in a... Oh, let's talk about that for a second, because I think this is hilarious, okay? You and I were (laughs) laughing. No, it's funny. So I'm... Yep. We are really into astrology, too, obviously, because of, um, you know, it's just part of the paranormal, supernatural, spiritual journey that we're on. And mm-hmm. Kat and I have talked about this. I'm a Cancer rising, and I'm very true to my sign. I'm represented by the moon. Um, I'm an Aquarius uh, moon, which is, Aquarius is known as being one of the more intelligent signs. And I do, I get crazy sometimes with my thoughts. Kat knows that. Like, when I get ideas, right, like, and most of them are good, but, man, I... My brain, you don't know how it works. You really don't want to be in there. You, you know, you know her Aquarius moon is in play when she calls you and she's like, "Cat, I have an idea. I have an idea." And I'm just like, "All right, Aquarius in the house. Go ahead, shoot." And then, and then I'm a Taurus sun, which I feel like my Taurus sun. Like I also have an Aries stellium, and I'm I'm sharing this because I I think that this is going to be a factor in in what we've talked about. You know, and and Cat is, um. An Aries sun, she's a Scorpio rising, so she'll she'll shank you in the appendix, okay? And then she she's a Libra moon, and then she also has an Aries stellium. So we both have Aries stelliums, okay? That's why we get along so well. Um, poor Elfies, like they are so loud, I just can't handle it. Jesus, sorry. Um, now when you're doing a certain ceremony like this, in my opinion, this is very personal. So this is your moon sign, right? Like, is that how you feel about it? So your Libra moon would be out, and my Aquarius moon would be out. So I, I want us to talk about this, seriously, okay? What would you think that my Aquarius moon would be like on ayahuasca? You'd be paranoid as hell. I would. Um, I can already see you. I, I can already see it. I feel like you'd be like... I'd be like, oh my god, oh my god, I have, I have a list of things that's going on, and then I would be trying to control it because that's what an Aquarius is a fixed sign. I would be trying to control it so bad that it would probably make the hallucinations worse. Honestly, yeah, yeah, and then you would want off. You would want <laughs> Give me off, off. The elevator. Okay, get me out of here. Get me off. Now with your Libra moon, <laughs> you would be like, my Libra moon's so just like. 
I just like balanced, you know? So it could go either way. But I also just feel like I don't, I feel like I'd be paralyzed. <laughs> <laughs> You'd just be laying in one spot. Just be like, <laughs> I'd be like, Kat, are you okay? And she'd be like, everything's gonna be fine. As she's like seeing demons like with wing come out. Like, it's gonna be fine. That's what she'd be saying. Hold on. My Scorpio rising would kind of be thriving, though. I'd be like, oh my gosh, <laughs> dark things. <laughs> Fine. My Cancer rising would be suicidal. I'd be like, let me end it. Let me just end it. I'm done. I can't do the hallucination soon. It's true. No, uh, seriously. That, yeah. That's why I know yeah. this is something that's not for me. I am a control no. freak. My Aquarius moon is yeah. a control freak. And I would be trying to control the hallucinations and it would not work. And that's probably why I've never, you know, done drugs before. I do want to talk about that too, though, is, is you know, I've talked about this publicly before. I have, uh, you know, my, my mother's side is indigenous. And uh, my grandmother was born and raised on the res. She escaped poverty and went into college. And uh, unfortunately, even though she escaped poverty, um, those generational curses still go down the line. So what I'm talking about is my family is, uh, is on something called the Dow's Rolls, and my family, my bloodline, my lineage escaped uh, surviving the Trail of Tears, which is a really big deal. But the problem with that is, is that whoever survived, there's just a long line of, um, I mean, in my family in particular, substance abuse. Um, in fact, I'm the only sober one on that side of the family, and I've never done drugs, and I haven't done drugs because I grew up seeing my entire family having these horrible generational curses of just generational trauma passed on from one you know generation to the next. And <clears throat> I grew up at a very young age. I mean, I think I, think I was like 14 or 15, which is very young, like you're, that's a very young age. And that was the first time I saw my cousins hallucinating. And um, they, you know, they, they took all kinds of different drugs. Like a lot of them did get hooked on meth, unfortunately. Some of them are still alive doing meth somehow. I don't even know how. Uh, <laughs> 15 years later, they're have, still kicking. I have, an, I have an uncle like that. Yeah. yeah. And, um, but they, they would do hallucinating, you know, drugs and all, all different things. And they tried everything. And of course they always tried to peer pressure me into it. And I would always be the one with my mom running to save everybody drowning in a Creek. Like I literally had a cousin one time that was tripping with her friends inside of a, um, it's not a Creek. What do you call that? Um, River? It was like an or, underground tunnel system. I'm trying to figure out how I could explain it. That's um, terrifying. Yeah, it, it, well, they, they have a lot of those in Colorado, so it doesn't flood um, because there's lots of rivers and, and lakes and stuff. So well, sometimes people will go down and do drugs in these tunnel systems. And I, you know, they asked me to go pull my cousin out, and I had to go get her. She was tripping out of her mind. Um, and, and I was the young one. I was the young one. I was 14 or 15. My cousins are all older. You know what I mean? So, uh, and it's like, God, get your life together. And there's a reason I've excommunicated myself from all those people. But when you see people hallucinate at that age, like you're so little, you know, like you're 14, you're really impressionable at that age. And you seeing people having these horrible trips. I think that if you knew what it looked like, you would, you would view something like ayahuasca differently. Like, yes, I respect it 100%. I believe it. I believe it's real. I believe that it can help people. I believe that it's part of the indigenous tribe. However, these indigenous people have been practicing it for hundreds of years. And you have these white Westerners going in. And I'm sorry, I don't think you know everything. I don't know if your body can handle it because it's not part of your DNA lineage. And, you know, just seeing my cousins hallucinate, it's a horrible sight. There's a story that I want to tell. Um about a friend that I had that was hallucinating um, just to kind of paint a picture if you've never seen it. <clears throat> I had this friend, um, I was actually dating this guy for a very long time. We ended up living together. So I was in my 20s. I loved him. I was like in love with him. Thought he was like the one. He was the first Aries that I ever dated and it was just like, you know, I love Aries men. Like he was it. Like I was like, he is the one. And I was really close with his sisters and they were younger 
and his sister, one of them, was going to school at CU Boulder, which is Colorado University Boulder. Um, it was probably a 45 minute drive from me. I lived on the west side. And she called me, uh, it was like a Thursday night, and she goes, I don't know, who, I don't wanna tell my brother because, you know, which was my boyfriend. She's like, I don't want to tell him he'll kill me if he knows I was doing drugs. But um, I, I snorted something and it ended up having like some something in it. And I've been hallucinating for hours sitting on my dorm room elevator. And I've been riding the elevator up and down for hours. And I said, well, first of all, how did you call me? And she's like, I don't even know. I can't see anything. Like everything looks like a fake world. Well, she said that every time I said, can't somebody, how have you been on the elevator for hours? You know, like I'm not, not sure, but like, hasn't someone tried to get on the elevator? Yeah. And well, they're college kids, so they probably don't want to get each other in trouble, you know? And uh, mm-hmm. so, so anytime someone would walk in on the elevator, um, she, th- this is what she said verbatim. It looked like a flying ant demon. So like a giant ant with wings coming at her and she was scared to death for any of them to touch her. So literally no one was taking the elevator and like they'd go to get on the elevator and she just start screaming bloody murder. I don't know how she was riding there for hours. So I drove up, I drove up to Boulder and she told me, like, you need to warn me before you get here because she's deathly afraid of anyone that, that walks towards her. So I got to Boulder, I got to her dorm room, and I got to the elevator, and it's the most horrible sight. She's sitting in the corner of the elevator, screaming her head off, having these horrible visions and hallucinations. And I, I opened the door, and there were some people that were there with me, and I asked them to hold the door for me while I could get her out so that no one else would, you know, call the elevator. And I drug, I I said, I'm here. I'm not going to say your name because I don't think she follows me, but I'm not going to say her name. I said, I'm here. Do you recognize my voice? And she said, yes, but you look like a flying, you know, demon ant or whatever. And I said, I need you to shut your eyes and I'm going to drag you out of the elevator. And I drug her out of the elevator by her feet. And I got her back to her dorm room and I watched her for 12 hours and it was the most horrendous sight you've ever seen in your life, hallucinating. She still doesn't know what she snorted, what was in it, because people probably mixed things in there. And um, she thought she was gonna die. And I was scared I was gonna have to call 911. I told her if you start having like sweats or labored breathing, I'm calling an ambulance. She didn't wanna get in trouble, you know what I mean? Because you could probably get arrested if you're on drugs or something. And, um, but I said, I will, if it gets to it, but somehow she made it through the night, but I was literally, what a cancer rising thing to do. That was always my job as a cancer rising. I was always the mother, always taking care of everybody. And, um, and my point is, is like, I get concerned that you get two celebrities like MGK and Megan Fox promoting something like this, which is okay. And if you choose to take it, it's okay, but understand what you're getting into, you know, like and, and with that being said, Kat, let's talk about that next, is you have a, a female divine feminine spirit who is attached to this herb the indigenous people believe to their core. You're in de- ingesting this female spirit. You, no matter what, you're going to have a massive, like a massive spiritual experience. And you're saying that this, this spirit is attached to Mother Earth And you're a white Westerner who's going to ingest this female spirit. What have white male Westerners been known to do to the planet? Destroy it. And you're going to ingest Mother Earth? Let me know how that worked out for you. Yeah, that's not going to be good. It's not going to be good. If If I was a male, I would be scared to death to take that plant, honestly. Especially a white male. Because she, she's not only going to make you pull out your own trauma, she's going to make you pull out generational trauma that you may not have even known that your lineage was a part of, which is also destroying the planet. The scientists just said we have, what, three years left till the planet, like, we're in trouble? And you don't think she's going to hold a white Westerner, you know, responsible for that? We're the ones with the money, with the greenhouses, with all the green gas, all the problems? So I'm just saying, people aren't thinking because on a spiritual level, like this is this shit's real for sure. 
Um, would you take it? Me? Mm -hmm. No. No. <laughs> Me? No, he's never. No. You wouldn't take it? <laughs> no, I wouldn't. So talk okay. about your research with the indigenous tribes because of your, your, your Hispanic heritage. Yeah, so I, um, it's really interesting because I've been wanting to learn more. We've done a uh, podcast about it, talking about curandera. And um, curandera is a Spanish word for healer. Um, so in Mexico, it's like, it's used for like traditional healers, depending on the source. Um, you know, it can sometimes have a negative connotation as being called a witch doctor in the Latinx community, but they really are spiritual healers. Um, they're really Im vitally important figures within um, the Mexican communities. So they, you know, Conanderas, um, just to give like a little outline here, they perform like a variety of, of duties ranging from ritual cleansing called susto to um, herbalist and psychological consults. So I got my brain thinking I wonder if curandera or curandisimos um, are part of the ayahuasca rituals within their communities because from what I had um, watched and heard about um, you know ayahuasca had had was more of like Amazonian um, tribes and you know South America as well and all of that but um, I wanted to figure out if there were rituals or retreats with curanderas um, watching over and, and helping perform with ayahuasca. And there are. Um, and actually, surprisingly enough, they claim curanderos or curanderos, curanderas, um, that it's best that whoever is interested in taking ayahuasca or having that experience and drinking it do it through a curandera. Um, mainly because they um, they take it. I mean, not not that other indigenous tribes don't take it seriously, but to a curandero, they put it into a more intimate, smaller manner than throwing you in the middle of the the woods or in a jungle to take this tea and just like best of luck to you. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that's not a sacred to them. However, they you know portray that or work that in, in their tribe is there's really no right or wrong, I guess. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that within the Latinx community and, and curanderas and how vital um, they are within their communities, they say that there's a better way to do this in a more um, sanitary manner, I guess, which means like smaller groups in a well-ventilated room with a lot of people yeah. surrounding you, <laughs> major support. I'm sorry, you said, well, you said well ventilated. I was like, why would you need ventilation? I'm like, because people smell like poo and they're vomiting right. lemon grass. Like, they're like, getting sick and they're in the middle of this like humid, hot jungle. Oh God. And, like, you oh. know what I mean? Like, farting, know, you're like so. all, you're all farting up a storm, like <laughs> farting ayahuasca. Oh God, Jesus. Oh, oh God. Uh. So, you know, it's just, it's hard because you know, because then curanderas get a really bad rap of like, well, you're not better than anybody or, you know, this and this and that. And, and that's true. Like, nobody is better than anybody. They all have their own practices and preferences. However, when you're bringing Western people or white people that have no idea what the heck's going on, uh, you know, within this ritual practice, especially if not a lot of people are being informed about what's going to happen, they just go there to experience it and then it happens and they freak out. Um, you know, it, it would be best to be in a better well more well well maintained atmosphere when going through this experience mm -hmm. and and curanderos claim to to do that do exactly that um so i just found it really interesting i just found it very very interesting because you know ayahuasca is is anywhere within those communities that practice it and of course they don't talk amongst themselves they all have their own practices but the undertone is the same, meaning it is spiritual. And, um, you know, Mother Ayahuasca is the defined feminine energy that is attached to this plant. Um, they just all, every indigenous tribe has their own way of practicing the ritual in itself. Mm -hmm. um, no two are going to look the same. No two are going to look the same. So for me, like, I feel like if I were going to go and experience this, I would probably go to a curandera mm -hmm. and, and, and have that experience. Um, 
because they are also healers. And a majority, because you have curanderos are males and then curanderas are females. A vast majority of curanderas are female. Um, and I like that, especially if it's a divine feminine energy that you're working with. You want to work with strong women within your circle or that are surrounding you understanding what's going to happen i feel like it would just mesh nicely it's interesting though because in the documentaries it was all like white men running these retreats yeah, we have a it lot was to the say strangest on that. thing mm -hmm. yeah it was it was just the strangest thing to me um so that's that's really all i had on that it's just um it's just very interesting seeing the links in between curanderas and other indigenous tribes and, and other shamans and how they perform this um, because it was like a totally dip for different uh, way it was being portrayed through, you know, Mexican communities rather than Amazonian tribes um, and how they handle it. And again, there's no right or wrong. It's just interesting to see both viewpoints with the same undertone of healing and ridding you of your shadows. Mm -hmm. Someone said, I want everybody to know about the Good Samaritan Law. If you see anyone tripping on drugs, you can call an ambulance and you won't get in trouble. I don't know. Is, does that exist everywhere? I, when I was sharing my story, by the way, that was literally 15 years ago. So that wasn't something that oh, happened yeah. recently. And I, I didn't know if that existed. But, I mean, I was a young kid, too. I didn't. I was in, I was a 23 or something. You know what I mean? So, um, anyway, thank you for that. If that's, if that's the case, I don't know. I'm not really promoting drugs on here, so I hope nobody's tripping. Um, Good just, job. <laughs> nobody trip right now. Please. Nobody trip. Please. Nobody get diarrhea. Nobody fart. Everything's gonna be fine. Um, <laughs> ayahuasca. I want to define this really quickly, and then you know, remind me. We're gonna talk about the marketing side of this too. So yeah. ayahuasca is called yige. Y a g e. It's a psychedelic brew of various plant infusions prepared along with a vine, which is what Kat's been talking about. It's fast growing, and it's also now internationally popular which is why everybody's going into these places. Um, also, Kat, remind me, I want to talk about the good uh, psychedelic, psychedelic effects that we've heard people and the bad psychedelic effects that we've heard from, from watching these. Um, mm -hmm. It's either mixed with leaves with DM, that contains the T, DMT that we talked about, um, or it's leaves from this other plant. Um, so you can take one without the DMT. However, if you're wanting to uh, visit with, with the mother, you have to take the one with the DMT. Um, indigenous people discovered these properties in the plant and they're not sure how or when. Um, there are fights that go on between the tribes because some people say it started in Amazon. Some people say it started in Central America. So what Kat found out while she was researching is, um, since she's Hispanic and that's her culture, um, they actually don't like it that the Amazonians use it the way they do. They have a problem with it. Um, so the Amazon people claim that they've received instructions directly from the plant spirits on how to create the ayahuasca and that's how it is created. So if you're wondering what the recipe is um, and who, because uh, a lot of people ask like, well, how, what is it, how was it made? They don't, they don't share that. Um, a lot of people claim that if you're a traveler and you're in these countries such as Costa Rica, Peru, even Mexico, quote, tripping on ayahuasca seems to be the new cool hip thing to do, which I think is, is the problem here. You shouldn't be, go you shouldn't be going to have a, uh, a trip. You should be going if, you're, if you think that you're needing some sort of spiritual experience. And yeah, I don't know. I had a, I had a quote. Um, from one of the documentaries. So there was a documentary on Gaia. It was like 13 minutes and it was called The Eye of the Needle. And at the end, the man who went to go and like film his experience, he said, quote, um, ayahuasca, just like blanked on the word, <laughs> ayahuasca could never be a recreational drug. It's a medicine of the indigenous tribes here and an ancient method of therapy still mostly undiscovered by the Western science. Respect all things natural." Mm -hmm. End quote. Um, and I find that very prominent because he does have a point in saying to, to respect it, but it is something that's still undiscovered by Western science. So I just, to me personally, like I just don't think that this is something that should be going viral. Well, it's also I think that this is something really sacred. It's strange. You know? yeah. Well, yeah, that's because you're you're Hispanic and it, you you know you feel that. So I, I totally agree with that statement. And because I I respect my my indigenous is Cherokee. We have shamans, but not I mean anything like this. Um, mm -hmm. 
it's hard because I think it's being promoted as like, you don't need to go to therapy. You don't need to do shadow work. You don't need to do self help. You should just go take ayahuasca one night and you'll get it all taken care of. And I think that that's like kind of a pussy way out of like not dealing with your shit. I don't know. It's dangerous. Well, it's dangerous. Yeah, it is. But it's like, you know, everybody has trauma. I've talked about that before too. Like nobody doesn't have trauma. Like you wouldn't be a person if you didn't have trauma. We all have our own trauma. And it's just weird to me that you think you can just go take a tea and then you're fine. Um, But, but like what happens? So you have the good trips and the bad trips, right? So you have the people that the good trips are like what Megan Fox experienced, butterflies, rainbows. I've heard people literally say they go into like troll communities and they see trolls. Mood. (laughs) Same. Literally. (laughs) Leprechauns. (laughs) Stop it. Leprechauns. Uh, yeah, I don't need to. I don't need to hallucinate. See why I don't need to hallucinate? Just go to the go to Jerome or the Stanley Hotel, and you're good to go. Um, Hang out with Crystal and I. Let's do the leprechaun. <laughs> leprechaun foot. <laughs> leprechaun uh, foot. Um, so the good experiences are fun, and there are these colorful things, and then like they have these these creatures that come talk to you. They're like, can you imagine if that's how therapy went? You have this like mystical creature that's like. Crystal, I like heard those trolls with the hair. I heard your mom was murdered. Let's talk about it. Okay, oh like it, it's sense. just not. It, it is, and like if you if you think that's the real world, like you've got something wrong. Else, you know what I mean? Like, um, and then you have like the experience like Megan Fox had, which is, and some people just see colors and like shapes and like geometric stuff. But the problem is, is they literally can't sleep because you even when you close your eyes, you're still seeing all these shapes. Can you imagine just trying to be like? I, I've been drunk before where you go to sleep drunk and the room is spinning. That's just bad enough for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're just yeah, like, geez, stop spinning. Um, <laughs> but then the bad ones are like really bad. And they literally say they feel like they've gone to hell. Like Megan said, they a lot of people I we were watching said that they had literal demonic encounters. And they'll come out of it and talk to the shaman. And the shaman's like, oh, it's not a demon. It's just your shadow side. Dude, if I have a demon attached to me, that's a serious problem. Okay, it's like a serious problem. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it's it's weird. It's You're back and forth on, like, which side is it. So we watched this one particular documentary where they this guy went to Peru. And he just, it's a really, it's kind of a boring documentary. So uh, there was... It didn't have very many stars on it, but it was because he was just showing his authentic journey on to this retreat. So he flies yeah. from America to Peru. Um, he goes into downtown Peru, and wherever the city he was in, and you can buy ayahuasca on the street. There are people that sell it in flasks in Peru. Did you see that? Six, for $6 in, in, in U.S. money. $6. <laughs> yep, you can buy ayahuasca. $15 in their money. And so yeah. he bought one, but he didn't drink it, but he took it with him. Which, God, is that pungent? Yeah. Like, that has to be musky if Ugh. it's been sitting down there in the heat. You know what I mean? And if it's hot, yep, yep, oh, yep. Growing bacteria and shit, you know what I mean? You wonder what your IBS is from, bro. Um, like, so then he, like, takes a cab to, like, the edge of, like, this river, which I think that was at the Amazon River. No, the Amazon No, it was somewhere else. This was a different one. Yeah, we've seen a few documentaries. I'm sorry. So he takes a cab to the river where there's a, he has like established a boat waiting for him to pick him up. And it's a three hour boat ride. And I'm, I'm not talking a glamorous boat here. I'm talking like it's a, it's a little canoe. It's a canoe with a a half made engine on the end of it. And it's a two hour. The dog was adorable, by the way. Um, The dog was adorable. And they, yeah. two hours on that canoe, little teeny ass canoe that looked like it was going to sink, by the way. Did you see that? Like, that freaked me out. Did on the back. Yeah, yes. Like it, I was like, oh. Was gonna, like, everyone's going to fly back. He's not going to make it, bro. Oh, gosh. <laughs> He's not going to, the canoe ride alone was dangerous, okay? Like, Jesus. And Ugh. he, <laughs> once again, this is a lot of trouble. A two hour ride, just start therapy, man. So he um, he gets to the, this, like, and it's just, like, desolate. Middle of nowhere. Honestly, Nothing. are there tigers and shit? Like, let's be real. There's got to be, like, gators and crocs, right? I mean, something's going to eat you out there, you know? Some weird Sasquatch out there. I don't know. And there's, funky. there's a skunk ape. <laughs> there's a skunk ape. 
Um, that's crypto. Uh, crypto in like swamp areas. This is skunk apes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this, this skunk apes, like, dude, there's a bunch of white people tripping on ayahuasca again. They're all just freaking asleep, like, passed out. Um, this is literally so, no. Uh, this, this, no skunk ape The skunk me. apes, like, humans are stupid, man. Um, so, <laughs> right? So also a mood. he goes into this ceremony. First of all, they, they then cut to the guy that's running this, that's running this. And that's where Kat and I about died. You're in the middle We're of Peru. Like, and it's this white British man who owns the retreat and owns all of this ayahuasca fields. Okay. And he's literally talking that he's making thousands of dollars per person coming to take the, do this ayahuasca retreat. It's expensive. Like, it's expensive retreats. If you want smaller groups of people, like 10 to 30, it's very expensive. Like, I'm talking, you'd have to be making a salary of $100,000 a year or more in order to go um, for these bougie-ass places. But it's this this white British guy in the middle of Peru running an ayahuasca retreat? How the hell did you get here, man, from, from Britain? Did you how, take a how boat? Is blue, how is your blue shirt ironed so well? Yeah. You have some... Oh yeah, he looked. You know, yeah, you see like, like a swanky outfit. You see the poor people of Peru, like I mean, like poor money-wise, poor, and this like clearly well-off, crisp ironed blue shirt British white guy who owns all this area, and I'm and he's taking the money from. And I was like dead shocked. I was like, oh my god, this is a marketing scheme. Like, I'm not Probably. saying that, that ayahuasca is not legit. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying there's some wrong people making some money off of this. And, I mean, you were, that was the first thing you were pissed about. I was like, what is happening here? I feel like this is really just not right. There's something not right happening right now. How did he get down there? Seriously, how did this old white British dude get down there? In the middle of you Peru? You never know. And he never said it. I don't know. So anyway, he's taken thing. all this money from all these people. They're, it's like a 10 people encampment. They're all sitting around drinking this hallucinogenic tea. He calls in his friend that's the shaman. The shaman starts singing the song. They, he wasn't able to record the actual ceremony, but he had like the audio on, if that makes sense. And um, like his phone was like tucked in his pocket, he said, because um, they didn't want anyone being videotaped, probably shitting themselves or, or barfing. And, um, which I wouldn't want to be videotaped either, okay? <laughs> Please turn your phone off, okay? I'm about to have a serious <laughs> IBS problem and I forgot to bring toilet paper, okay? I'm about to have an explosion. Please don't put this on TMZ, okay? I'm crying, Kat. Last thing we need right now. It's so okay. bad. Woo! This is bad. This is bad. I doubt they have toilet so paper. Honestly, they probably just use leaves down there. You know what I mean? Like, there's oh, no, no there's no, no running no, toilets. No, no. There's no toilet. There's a hole, you know? So, um... Is there? <laughs> so he says that he, uh... <laughs> scared, bro. I'm scared, bro. Okay? <laughs> like, jeez. Woo! Um, it's making me sweat thinking about it. Like, God. I know, me too. <laughs> I feel like I'm empathing. Um, Literally, there's like the 10 people. Are burning. <laughs> there's 10 people sitting around <laughs> drinking ayahuasca. And he's like, I literally hallucinated for 12 hours. And he was like, that was it. <laughs> that's what he said. He was like, was I didn't, that. he's like, I didn't meet ayahuasca. I don't know who that is. I don't know who the hell that is. He was like, all I know is I didn't sleep. And he was like, the only thing that I got out of this was colors seemed brighter. The next day, I was like, what? Yeah. She was like, I woke up and I I saw the world in a different light. I, You know, and he was just like... Because you were hallucinating all night, bro. Honestly, he might have still been hallucinating. To be totally honest. <laughs> Jesus. Because that stuff is like... Oh, my God. Potent. So, anyway. Um, it was bizarre. It was just, it's just very bizarre. But... You know, it's not something that's... And he, he said he threw up, and he said he heard everyone vomiting around him. Everybody vomiting. He's like, I don't think not one person didn't vomit. And uh, you're right. If you're hallucinating... You know, like, in all seriousness, like, I, I want to talk about it. If you're sitting there hallucinating for 12 hours and you have to shit, seriously, how are you going to get up and run to somewhere if you have to sh If you're hallucinating, where are you going to go? You're not. You're not. You would have to go there. You would have no choice. I'm sure it happens. I'm sure it happens. Nope. 
I just don't want to think about it. <sighs> I'm just not going to think about it. Don't take your new pants from Macy's. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, don't get ruined. Oh my gosh. <laughs> get ruined. So, the last one was marketing you want to talk about? Well, yeah. What do you think yeah, about I these people making money on this? I mean, so, okay. I want to talk about it. So, some of the cheaper resorts, yeah. I have it pulled up. So, there's resorts all over the place, depending on where you go. Um, there's literally lists of the best ones that we're, we've been told and we've been reading the most expensive bougie resorts are Costa Rica, which is where MGK and Megan went. Obviously we're talking about they're multimillionaires. They have actual retreat houses that you can stay in. Um, so I'm sure it's crazy expensive, especially it's, it's usually like a seven day thing. It's like a seven day retreat. Um, it's like ten thousand dollars or something. Oh, it? Minimum. Min- it depends on the days that you stay. Now, if you're looking at one of the cheaper mm-hmm. ones, it can cost between three hundred dollars a day to six hundred dollars a day. But God, I feel like it's one of those things that you get what you pay for. True. Or right. Do you? Or, do, or do you? If it's a lot of money, like I well, don't know. Well, and that's the thing. I like, just, I- if it's being respected as like an indigenous plant, are they respecting it by allowing all these people to come in and like hallucinate for days on end? But yet they're, but yet they're they're pay they're making people pay all this. You know what I mean? Doesn't that sound strange yeah. to you? Well, it's you know energy is real and your energy transference is real. Okay, you know this divine being that's attached to this plant as well might have been manifested might have not been who knows who knows um and i just have a bad it it hurts my gut no pun intended to think about such a sacred ritual within indigenous tribes and them allowing you know western white man to come in and just experience it for the trip and for the money i just feel like that's just bad karma you know like or bad juju to do that I feel like it, this is something that should be well researched, well read, contracted. Here are the health concerns. Here's what this is. Please take this seriously and not just seen for like the dollar. But then it's the other side where it's like, you, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these areas um, could use the finances, mm-hmm. could use the money mm-hmm. to help those that are around them. So it's like, where is the line? Not where, this where, white, not a white line? British man in Peru, though. Well, not, no, but other ones that might not be headed by a white random British man in the middle of Peru. Right. Um, you know, it just makes you question. It just, it's hard. It's a hard thing to discuss mm-hmm. because it's personal at that point. It's personal to those that are experiencing it and to those that uh, have had it within their, you know, indigenous roots for so long. You know, another thing, so, though, you know, is, it, you know, I don't know if you can die from ingesting too much of this. I don't know if you can die. I don't know. And once, a minute, once again, it may not be ingesting that that kills you. But once again, like I said, it, is there bacteria? Is the, is it clean? Like, let's be real. Is it clean? Like, there could be, there could be, you know, something else that kills you. And, and we won't hear about that. We're not going to hear about no. who dies. And, and, and then if you're a foreigner there and you die from something, even if it's not the ayahuasca, what do they do with you? Like, are you supposed to go with a will? Are you supposed to have, like, a, an advance? Are you supposed to have yeah. a power of attorney there? Are you, like, how did they get your body out of there? And honestly, I mean, they probably, I, let's be real. Yeah, I know what you're going to say. I know what you're going to say. They're just going to throw and your you know body what? in the in the river. I, know. I mean, how else are they going to get know. your body in the middle? You're in the middle of Peru in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. How are they going to get you home? I don't know. No, they're not. And and here's the thing, too, is we looked. We can't find any reports on any types of severe health crises or deaths that occurred. And I just I just know in my gut there there has to have been people that have died from this something there there i mean and i know there's gonna be people saying oh well i've taken shrooms or i've done this and it's never killed me right. i'm this not is not shrooms what if it's not the shroom though what if there's a deadly bacteria in how they're cooking it and, and you're from a very blessed country where you don't have to really worry about that kind of bacteria because you're able to use dawn soap daily where they are not able to and well, you, you yep you know you think taco bell was bad well and Oh, God. Well, and allergies. Yeah. Allergies. Yeah, true. What if you're allergic to Oh, my God. To and you don't I know. didn't even think Can about that. Can you imagine? That. Wow. 
I need it, this is a legit thing. Like, you know, you can't just be a random Joe Schmo coming up and wanting to get a trip on ayahuasca. Dude, it's going to hurt you. There's going to wow. be some issues. And it's hard when there's such a sacred bond to it and a spiritual experience with it to not have that energy of like, it's disrespectful. Like, why are you walking up in here and we're, we're welcoming you even as a tribe in the middle of the jungle? And like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. You I, know, like, it's just. I would like to comment on that just from my tribe, which I am registered with my tribe. Obviously, my grandmother's right off the res, you know. I respect my, my heritage hardcore. I know I'm white with blonde hair. My natural color is black. I'm in the sun for five minutes, and my skin is dark. I hide from the sun because it doesn't match my hair color, you know. And, and you know, <laughs> hashtag skin cancer. But um, I, I know my indigenous family, and I've always respected them and I've passed their policies down because my grandmother I got all of the artifacts you know in my family they were all passed to me which are really important from the Trail of Tears but I know that in my indigenous family if this is something they were practicing they wouldn't allow outsiders in I know that for a yep. fact so that's that. And that's the part I find strange. Which you're right. They they probably need the money in the communities, um, is probably one of the most yeah. driving factors. But it it is strange. It's just I don't know. I'm just weighing all the factors because my how my Aquarius moon brain works. You know what I mean? It's true, and it just makes you beg to question. Like, are some forms of gatekeeping okay? okay. You know, um, especially with something this this potent that doesn't seem to be overly well explained as to here's what's going to happen here are the ingredients in it here you know um it just it's a concern it's a concern and with it going viral and it being earth day today happy earth day yeah right um you know I, it just it's important to weigh all the options and see and hear other people's experiences instead of just seeing it on TikTok and then going to the middle of Peru and having an allergic reaction to ayahuasca mm -hmm. and you're stuck there. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like this is real life. This is this is a thing. This is not a trip. This is an experience mm -hmm. and it should be taken seriously. Mm -hmm. um, don't believe what you see on the internet. Don't believe what you see online. Um, which is why, you know, we wanted to do this was to spread that awareness no and i find it fascinating and interesting and i'm definitely a believer in this and if it's something that you want to experience don't let cat and i you know stop you from doing it um yeah you do you we just like to analyze things you guys know how we are this is just what we do but you know i, I don't know i'm just it, there's so much to wrap your head around with it there's so much you know if you were to take it let's just flip the other side what would you, what, and which I'm not promoting it because I can't do that on my stream, so I'm not promoting it. But if you were to take it, what, I just think that you shouldn't, I think you should have already tried therapy like Megan Fox said she did, already tried psychotherapy and already done shadow work. Like this, I, like, you, you should want to try to fix yourself and do the work yourself. Like some of the trauma that we've experienced as humans, like I, I've, I've been watching, I'm into like really big like spiritual leaders and, and spiritual ascension and, and that's going to be more videos that we talk about later. Um, but um, you, you talk about these spiritual leaders and they say you were born in this world as this like innocent little being, innocent baby. And you know, you, you were born without trauma. You didn't have trauma when you were born. However, over time trauma happened to you now when you were a child that trauma was not your fault you didn't cause that trauma no matter what it was which we've all experienced trauma however it's your responsibility as an adult to unf yourself right so in my opinion trying to unf yourself doesn't mean going to the jungle and just taking some tea and calling it good you need to want to do the work yourself you need to put some elbow grease into this if you want to ascend spiritually as a person and you want to be a better person and you want to heal yourself from your trauma you need to put in some of the work yourself even if that's like depression anxiety going to a doctor getting medicated getting diagnosed going to therapy god i i just was in therapy i just came out of therapy another therapy session i can't tell you how many times i've been in therapy cat's been in therapy you know what i mean like um, it's part of just this, this journey called life. This is a hard planet to incarnate on. And I think that a lot of people are looking for a quick fix and easy fix, rip the bandaid 
and I don't know if this is the best decision to do that. And and you could have an adverse effect. I'm not the, the type that would want to hallucinate for 12 hours. Now, as you guys know, I am since my mom passed away, I have been really, 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 I ha I've I've leveled up in my spiritualism. I uh, since January, I am in constant communication with my guides, whether that's in dreams or meditation. You wouldn't believe how quickly I can communicate with them. It's unbelievable. Um, and I was never able to do that until my mom died and she started coming to me. And, and now she's also one of my spirit guides. So she also communicates with me. So I went into um, a dream the other night and I told Kat, I said, I'm going to ask my guides um, about this, about ayahuasca. Because I was reading about it and I was like, if, if, if this is such a spiritual thing, do I need to go do it? You know, like, seriously. Oh my God. I did ask Kat that. Oh my I did. gosh. I know you did. I did. I said, and it wasn't like, and I was still on the fence of like, yes or no. So I went into, you know, my sleep and I had a, you know, a meditative sleep with my guides. And I said, guides, is ayahuasca something I need to experience? And the, and before I could even finish asking the question, they said, no. And then I said, what is it that they experience? Like, I, I want to know, is it spiritual ascension? Seriously, is it spiritual ascension? Is it an entity? What is it? And the only word that they gave me was hallucinations. And that's all they would say. They wouldn't say anything else. So I do feel like it's also within your mind of your mind's perception. So when I'm saying that, I mean... It's sort of like the placebo effect, right? And once again, I'm not saying that ayahuasca is not real. I think she's real. I think that it, absolutely I'm indigenous. I believe she's real. But what I am saying is if you're going to an ayahuasca retreat and you believe that that tea will heal you, it will in fact heal you. Yeah. Now, once again, through hallucinations, whatever else, I don't, whatever, it's up to you, however you believe it. But it's like the placebo effect. If you also believe you're going to do your shadow work, which Kat and I have done years of shadow work, we've done years of therapy, group therapy, you name it. I'm not. And honestly, that's the other thing I wish people would understand is when you're healing your trauma, it is a lifelong process, bro. Like you, it's never going to just end. Like you, I, I've done shadow work and it's never going to end. It's going to continue to pop up for the rest of my life. You just learn to live with your shadow self. You don't heal your shadow self. It doesn't go away. You merge with it. And I mean, I'm still going through it now with my mom being murdered. You know, I'm having a whole new level of shadow work that I'm having to deal with. And I'm, that's something I know I'll be fighting for the rest of my life. And it, you, you'll, I'll never heal from it. It's, I, I, and I, in fact, trauma like that, when someone's murdered in your life, the old version of me that you used to know, she died in January. She is dead and gone. That crystal is gone and she is not coming back. Anyone that knew me before January of 2022, she is dead. Taylor Swift style. Can't come to the phone right now. She is dead. It's true. She died when my mom was murdered, period. She's gone. In fact, I don't even know who the new person is yet. I am still merging with my new self. And I think that's also part of trauma is learning that over time, even through trauma, yes, you have the rain, but then you have the rainbow, meaning the rain is my past self and the rainbow is my future self. When we live on this planet, we have 20 million different versions of ourself that we have to learn to merge with and grow with over time. And I don't think even if you are, I mean, I don't even, you know, you have Megan Fox who said she's done therapy and psychotherapy and, and that's why she went to do this treatment was to see if it would help her. But then the second night she goes into the depths of hell for 12 hours. She's like, nope, I'm good. I'll live with my trauma. You know what I mean? Like, um, yep. but so my point is, is like, I don't know. I don't know what's going to work. I don't know if it's going to work for you or not. I guess it's a personal journey. You're going to have to figure out if it's something you want to deal with or not. Personally for me, I don't do drugs. I don't, I, there's no way in hell I would ever try this. There's no way I, I would, I would be in fear for my life tripping out for 12 hours and, and <laughs> what I would see. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know about you. Yeah. You said no. No, no, yeah. that's no, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. 
Mm-hmm. And it's not for sake of not wanting, like, help. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's just not for me. Well, also, like you said, going to the middle of a forest sounds really scary, too. That's that's just deadly. That's like a death wish. Honestly. Also, do people, like, hallucinate and then and then go to leave and they get lost? I'm sure that's happened somewhere. Right? Honestly, I'd just be afraid of, like, being eaten by something in the jungle because I feel like that would just happen. <laughs> I feel like... Because the, the walk to get to even, like, the like in the documentaries, wasn't one of the places, like, three miles away or something, mm-hmm. like, walking? Trek, trek in, yeah. You Once had they to, got on land? The boat first, then you had to trek in another, like, three And then five. you have to walk it, literally. Mm-hmm. And it's just, like, a no path in the, in the middle of the jungle. Also, can you imagine leaving the retreat, no sleep, hallucinating for a week, and having to, to walk three miles back to the boat? Uh Woo! Oh Jesus. With my insides on fire, literally. <laughs> With no <laughs> toilet paper for a week, your butthole is raw everything, from using the leaves, you every, know? <laughs> everything burns. Everything is on fire. <laughs> like, literally. Okay. I can't. I hope one oh, of the animals God. takes me out. Okay, because after At that, At this point, where's the crocodile, okay? At this point, I will feed myself to the crocodile, okay? I, I kid, I kid, I kid, I kid. But also, I don't know. <laughs> Do they sell hemorrhoid cream on the island? You know what I mean? You never know if you're going to need it. Like, I'm just saying. I, you know, honestly, there probably is an herb for that. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> There probably, there probably is an herb for that. Woo! Okay. Maybe that's my green whiskey self coming out. It's fine. I'm, I'm <laughs> coming. I'm coming off the ayahuasca boat now. So yeah, that's. I think that covered it. It's, it's interesting. That's, it's fascinating. If if you know what that's I mean. That's the tea. I had. <laughs> that's the diarrhea tea. I had no idea <laughs> it was such a thing. Did you? No. 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 Thank goodness we researched this stuff. Because, <laughs> oh my god! I didn't. Can I you ha- imagine if we went to a retreat, Crystal? No. Okay, that's the truth. If you guys want to know the truth, is that we started seeing these things pop up about it. Not that. By the way, we didn't know it was DMT. We didn't know it was like Kat said in the no, beginning. We, we thought no. She thought it was mugwort. We thought it was mugwort, something similar yeah, to something mugwort. Like mugwort. Which is yeah. very witchy, like a, yeah. And so when cat, it is, and it's hallucinogenic. It is, it's not yeah. But you're also not supposed to take a frick ton because it can make you sick too. Um, which no, I have not taken my core, by the way. But um, <laughs> anyway, Kat and I were like, oh my god, like what is this? Like is this? And then you know she's Hispanic Indigenous. I'm regular Indigenous of Native American Indigenous, and we're both like. Should we go to this retreat? Like, this sounds like this cool spiritual experience. Like, you're with people that are, like, having spiritual, like, ascension. Like, do, like, that was where this conversation started. Dead serious. Dead serious. Like, you, Kat Kat and I were, like, I think we were talking about, oh, let's take another trip to Sedona. Or should we go, like, maybe we should do something crazy. Like, let's do this ayahuasca trip. And then Kat was, like, well, maybe we should research it. And all of a sudden we were, like, well... That wasn't yeah, quite well, what I expected. Glad it. We did that. Glad we did it. No, but it's and true. Then I made jokes How many all day, people literally. go down there blindly and not know what they're getting into? I bet a lot of oh people do. I feel like, I feel like if that happened to me, I would, I would feel like I'm in the middle of like some weird culty nightmare movie where like okay. everybody is just in a circle that's it's, like, a good point bad. you you watched another documentary i didn't and you said it felt very cold you were watching it you said it felt very cold it felt culty i'm not saying that the tr- the indigenous peoples there are culty i'm just saying that the group with the white man another white man by the way uh it just seemed a little culty to me like people getting in a circle drinking tea together they're all getting sick i'm just think about just like a cult and you're paying like, money scary. to throw up you're paying and money yeah you're paying money to get sick and to drink tea that makes you vomit before you have the, like it's just are you saying that it sounded like heaven's gate <laughs> Is that what you're saying? I, you know i'm just yeah I, you know but that was before knowing like the actual legitimate spiritual experience you can have you know not just on the basis of what social media is saying to go out and go do it mm-hmm. and go try it. You know, this is not. This is <laughs> oh my god! Cat and I show up to Costa Rica and like we get all this information and we're like, well, we just wasted ten we're grand. Blogging. We're we're leaving now. <laughs> Can you guys imagine if we vlogged that? Like, oh 
No. Uh, no, no, well, I, okay, and no. here's another thing Kat and I said, too, because, okay, this is interesting, because we're almost done, by the way. Um, <laughs> sorry, this was a fun stream, though. This was fun. I, lo I do yeah, love history, and I do love culture, and that's really the basis of this, you know what I mean? And then I, we love spiritualism, yeah. but, you know, we were talking, um, we watched the Playboy Bunny, what was that um, documentary? You, if you guys haven't seen it, you need to watch it. It's oh. on A&E, right? Yep. What was it called? The Playboy, the Playboy uh, Diaries or something? something. Um, anyway, it was basically about um, all these ex-Playboy bunnies that um, they were living in the house and uh, like horrible secrets of, secrets of Playboy. It was all this traumatic stuff that happened, um, which I wasn't really familiar with the girls next door. I never watched it. I was in like seventh grade when it came out. And I wasn't allowed to watch it. I was not allowed to watch that. Like, my, my mother was like, you're not allowed. I think she was scared I was going to get, like, ideas. Like, my daughter's blonde. I don't want her flying to, like, Los Angeles, you know? But so my I... My mother would call it smut. That's smut. What's you smut? What is that? Is it, like, like trashy? Is that what like, that is? Just, like, trash. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I don't... I, ne I never knew... I never knew the Playboy side. I was just too young for when it was, like, in the 90s. You know what I mean? When, like, it looked glamorous with, like, the Pamela Anderson side and stuff. But anyway, um, a lot of these girls were saying that Hugh Hefner would just hand them pills. Like, literally handfuls of pills. And they would just take them. And that was where the conversation started too is like cat and I, I would never just take pills somebody handed me ever and then they would end up like knocked out and i'm not saying that it's the victim's fault for god's sake if you got raped but i'm just saying i would never just take pills somebody handed me and that's sort of like the ayahuasca thing is like i don't think i would just take something somebody hands me without knowing what's in it. I feel like that's like, well, unless you want to like possibly die, like it could kill you. Who knows what it is? It's scary. That's really scary to think about, especially when you're in a really isolated location like that. It just makes you wonder. Who? Yeah. You know? Who makes it out? Yeah. Who makes it out? Yeah, I know. I have the same question too. And it's something we're never going to know. We're never, you're never going to get statistics on that. I don't want to know. Well, you I don't, don't know. but if they, if they did, release information like people dying from ayahuasca or like you know parasites or allergic reactions they're not they're not going to release it because they're going to be afraid people won't come down to take it so then they're going to lose out on that money especially if you have celebrities like mgk and megan fox paying a lot of money to go to these places i mean am i right well yeah and i feel like they're so out of the way i feel like there are a lot of places that are protected you know what i mean true so, like, oh that's a good point yeah you know what I mean? Where you can't get in trouble if you go past a certain state line. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's it's one of those situations. They they protect so the out, community. They touch you. Yep, they protect yeah. the community. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah, believe it's it. just eh. makes you wonder if that's how people I mean, disappear. If like people going to Costa Rica even, and disappear. It's true, but like even Megan Fox said that she thought it was going to be like glamping. Yeah. And then she just ended up in the in the middle of the jungle. I'm like, I would be in shock. Honestly, I would probably, if I saw the boat <laughs> that, you know, we had to go on to go and experience that, I'd probably be like, I'm going home. Yeah. We're going home. I know. It's, it's interesting. Not... It makes you wonder if people have a hard time saying no, which is also part of ascension and learning, like, boundaries. Like, it's okay to say well, no. I, well, I just feel like, too, she might have just been putting her and him in danger because they're very high profile figures. Yeah. Why would you go into, like... A group, random group of 20 people, of course they're going to know you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, why would you put yourself in that position to also be uncomfortable? Like, what if something happened? What if you had a sock stalker fan or something? Mm -hmm. You know, like, I just, I don't know. I don't think that was a very wise decision on her part for a lot of reasons, but I'm not her, so mm. she made that choice. <laughs> Personally, I don't want to go to hell okay. for 12 hours, and I'm good to go. You know what I'm saying? I think I've, li I I've lived know. enough trauma that I don't need to go back to hell. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> it's true. Oof. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it's, it's just true. crazy. Yeah. So use your discernment. Use your discernment. Yeah, and sure. I'm not promoting it, but you do you, and nope. I would not try it, and you do you, and I respect it, and... If, if you're messing with Mother Earth as a white male, ooh, good luck. Let me know how that goes for you because, uh, you know, the planet's getting slowly destroyed and now you're going to hallucinate with Mother Earth. Ooh, that sounds rough. Woo! 
you she know gonna I mean? have some things to say. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say about that. Yeah, and I believe yeah. it. I believe she's real. I believe it exists. So anyway, I hope you guys learned something okay. from this. This was a fun stream. This is hilarious. It was fun to this do. This was fun. Um, I always go off on tangents. It is, and I love learning about culture. I respect culture. I love culture. I, my mom always, you know, always was really into like cultural stuff. So it's fun to learn about all these tribes and, and all these places. And yeah, just be smart with whatever you do. And I feel like that's more than just this. It's just in life in general, like l life daily decisions. Just be safe, right? Like just be safe and think and research things yep. before you just show up in a jungle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, basic. The worst you know. part is, though, is you may not be able to research it till you get there to experience it. So that's kind of scary, too. You know what I mean? So just interesting. Just Why inter would you spend so much money and not? Like, I don't, I don't understand it. Yeah. Maybe it's just human brain. I don't know. Maybe it's just, I just don't get it. I well, know. I think it was, ex I think it was like you and I in the beginning where we were just like, oh, let's just go on this experience. And then we were like, whoa, wait a minute. It may not be exactly what you thought it was. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Next week is Elfie. I think we have an occult talk next week. She's she's really into her occultist, and I love it. I don't remember who we're working on with next week, but it'll be good. Um, Elfie always finds the weirdest history, and it's like, I just love listening to her. You know what I mean? Make sure you guys are following us on TikTok. So much bathroom humor. Sorry about that. Um, you know. I'm not sorry. It's hilarious. <laughs> I'm just we saying. We all go to the bathroom. Just paint a picture. Yeah, well, I mean, maybe oh, that was no. too much of a picture. <laughs> you know? I mean, there's really no other way around it. How else do you talk about pooping yourself? You know? You know? It's just a bodily function, y'all. It's okay. Just We're pack. You know, I guess the last piece of advice if you go on one of these retreats is pack depends and some extra toilet paper. That's all. You know, maybe some Tums. Is it like, like, can you imagine getting up in the middle of the ceremony, ask the shaman, do you have any Tums, sir? Bag. I just need some Tums really quickly. I'm dead. I, uh. girl, girl, Tums are not going to help you at this point, okay? Like, you are on your own with, with goddess, okay? Anyway, guys, thank you so much. <laughs> Make sure, <laughs> goddess ayahuasca. Make sure you guys download this stream. It should be available by tomorrow on all platforms, including Spotify, iTunes. Cat Elfie, congratulations on all of your stream downloads. We are kicking butt on all of the streams. It's amazing. People love Cat and I talking about our strange poop tangents. And like I said, follow us on social media. Please, TikTok is kicking butt. Make sure you guys engage with as much of our content as you can so that you help us grow. Um, I'm hoping, I was hoping this week. Back from the dead, 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 dead,